all off the screen and uh, all the uh, voting members are in attendance. So I'll oh. declare. Um, let's see. So we're starting at 9, 6.33. Okay. Um, one more, uh, the call for anything else you want to put on the agenda tonight that's not on the existing agenda? Yes, I would uh -huh. like to. Um, I met with um, Adam Sokolowski about the parade, so I would like to tag that on. Oh, okay. great. Thanks. We'll do that under um, new business. How's that? That's perfect. Thanks, okay. Pete. Uh, and... I wanted to add, just to uh, see if you had comments on the questionnaire that I sent out uh, last night. Um, I don't know if you've even had a chance to look at it or not, but if, if, if you do, I'll, I'll uh, I heard back from Carolyn already. And if you've had a Well, I think it was great. I think anything that's exciting, I mean, we, anything that's gonna get kids and people excited is wonderful. All right, so um, let's see. So I'll add the survey into the new minutes as well. Um, um, I have one thing I want to add. This is Jennifer. Um, I wanted to add under new business, um, talking about um, the follow up regarding the nonprofit had some questions. Okay, so follow up with nonprofit. Well, as my nonprofit hat, I have yep. questions from the board who, yeah, okay. so. All righty, any others? No. Nope. All right, if not, we'll uh, start with the agenda and the approval of uh, the minutes from last um, month. Oh, well, there you are. Hi, sorry. <laughs> I make a motion we approve the minutes as presented. I, I second. Okay, any discussion? I don't think so. I think they were really good. Hearing yep. none, um, we'll, we'll approve, approve them unanimously. How's that? Perfect. 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 Uh, second item on the agenda, Facebook committee list and brief descriptions of various jobs. Um, so in my notes from last month, um, sorry, I gotta remember which book they're in. Too many books going at once. I need to keep them more organized. Um, I have uh, some responsibility with job description for the gala in the 5k fun run. Um, I'm still in process because I wanted to make them pretty detailed. And the question I had was when we post them on the description on Facebook, um, I did post a general one, you know, and I pinned to the page about the volunteer needing or needing volunteers for those specific events. Um, I had a couple people or I had one person email and then a couple people chime in underneath. So um, I think at this juncture, it's more or less gaining the interest uh, because I think um, down in the uh, nonprofit world part is a question about the gala number for, for that and then and the 5K fun run. Um, I don't wanna deviate some of those because in a conversation I had with um, with Casey last week, I just want to uh, clarify some structure uh, to not create any ethical issues with receiving any money on steering committee behalf. If the steering committee is the one who is uh, selling the tickets for or doing for the 5K, because we know after previous discussion, it would be the nonprofit selling the tickets for the gala you know, in coordinating with the steering committee to do all the decorating and such. So I just want to um, clarify some of those questions before I solidify my uh, job descriptions. Okay. And, and, and I had commented that I would help draft for the parade. I just met with Adam yesterday. So after we flesh out any questions, 
um, then I will be able to um, put some signature on that. Okay, so we'll uh, continue on with both of those then uh, add them to the next agenda then for follow up. For some reason, Holly, I, I thought I asked, I'm just gonna find it. I don't know if I texted it to you. There was a question about um, something I had wanted you to ask John, if you were or Chief Pachorek, but you talked to Adam, so it was sorry. Now I'm forgetting what it was. You just messaged me. I know whether or not the route was established, but oh, I because, don't recall. Because um, yeah, it was the if the route was established because we were looking at um, pole banners as being um, something to work through with the okay. nonprofit and us. That was that was it. Thank you. Okay, I'll just put a place marker on my parade notes when we get to that. Great. Jennifer? Yes. Casey did mention to me about setting up that website. Yep, that's later on the agenda. I was going to ask you to plug in there. Okay. Thanks. All right, so we'll continue that with uh, next time. Any any other discussion with this then? Um, I think at this point, I'm just gonna continue to just advertise on, or just to post on Facebook um, and set up a couple things with that. I'm scribbling notes. No problem. You know, I figured something out as secretary for the, for whatever, lack of a, lack of a term, a note taker and whatever. Um, what I've, what I've found or what I came up with just for my own purposes, but I, I'll share it with anybody who wants it as a technique is if you take an, an old minutes meeting or the minutes from a, a previous meeting and it has a standard structure then as soon as you get the agenda, you take the agenda and stick it in that. Yep. Yep. So you wind up actually getting something that looks like this, which is, this is format, I just fill it in and then I go on with the agenda down here. So it, it, it saves you trying to recreate and shuffle papers next time. Uh, we'll see how fast I get it out, but what, it, I should be able to just take this, type it up and stick it in the mail, you know, stick it in the email slot, so. Great suggestion. Peter, we are so appreciative of what you're doing. So please don't even think about it. I mean, I'm so thankful for you doing it, really. All righty, well, that's, I just thought I'd share that. Uh, next item on there was the post office cancellation stamp. I've not made progress on that. So let's just continue that one. Okay. Um, uh, I actually, uh, a couple months ago, I had talked to Robin at the old Deerfield post office. What was the, um, I have to go and mail some stuff to my son tomorrow. So what did you, um, if she's there, Holly, she doesn't always work all, all the time, but um, what, what did you want me to ask her? Well, we, we were looking at both post offices on um, previous discussion we were wondering if we could get um, a double cancellation from both post offices. If, um, she's, if she's there, I'll ask her about that. If and she's then, not there, I'll leave a note. Okay, and then um, an image um, for both. Um, I had, I don't know if you had in your notes when we got these way back from Kathy Melnick. Yeah. So these were some ideas that she had shared um, and then Pete, you had one as well, right? That you had shared. Yeah, it, it, it has to my has to do with my old days of stamp collecting back in the seventies. But they there used to be uh, what they call first day of issue stamps, and what they would do is they would actually emboss a formal envelope, and then have the cancellation stamp on it. Now, I don't know whether philately is 
uh, all that popular today to even think about going and taking that step so that people can actually buy an embossed envelope with the cancellation stamp on it. I, I think I sent them out to everybody. There were just two of them. Uh, would, this be, would this be embossed, uh, you know, would this be stamped with a forever stamp so you could use it at any time or? Well, you could. I mean, these, okay. were, these were pretty fancy. I mean, they were uh, illustrator quality type of embossments, but you could use anything. But I, I think in terms of stamp collecting, it kind of enhances the, the process if you've actually got a, a nice stamp of some sort that can go on the envelope as well as the cancellation stamp. Yeah. Uh, I'm posting I'll, on Facebook about it right now. Okay. Okay. Good. Sort of, I'll, if I run into Robin tomorrow, interest, that... I'll, I'll try to make sure between now and next meeting, I will talk to Robin on that. And so, know... Jen, you were going to ask about whether people would be interested in that? On Facebook? I'm, yep, I'm putting how many of our followers are stamp collectors? Would you okay. be interested in purchasing a cancellation stamp or embossed envelope um, with the cancellation mark? Is that or the cancellation stamp on it? Yeah, and I would, um, I would do it, um, it. This would be a one day stamp, and I would probably do it on Founders Day. Okay. Which would be made. I think that's a great idea. Whatever. So that, would be, that's that would 7th, be May, that would be May 5th, 2023. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you said May 7th before. My apologies. Well, it may uh, go back to where you were. I'll have to look it up again, but it's one or the other. Okay. No, that's all right. <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> you know, and then somebody then somebody's gonna that. be asking. You should know that. <laughs> yeah, then somebody's gonna be asking, well, what it's calendar, on the calendar are you? It's huh? on our calendar on the seventh. That's what okay. I had. So that's okay. that's the one you have. Yeah. Okay. You have. So, Thank you for uh, the calendar. May seventh. Well okay. So then somebody's going to ask, well, I didn't which think calendar it was are you de Mayo. <laughs> you have the Julian calendar and you have our modern calendar. And actually, when Founders <laughs> Day came along, we're on the Julian calendar. So actually, Founders <laughs> Day is seven days is eleven days later. So it would, by our calendar, it would be on May 18th. So Peter, I'm not gonna which one should it be? Huh? Which one, so if we're doing this and we wanna be historically accurate, do you, would you like I, to do I it both use, days? Use the old, that was the date that's on the document. So I would go ahead and use that date. May 18th? No, May 7th. May 7th, okay. Yeah. Well, but I find it interesting because like when you find, when I was doing um, genealogical research, you find the, um, you know, the Deerfield Raid listed as 1703 slash 1704, you know, as the year on a lot of documents and even on the, the tombstones. The great they, they, they have 1703 slash 04 listed. If you go into the oh, okay. um, here, to the cemetery the here, old, okay, Let, let's we can talk about that for a sec. That's the old calendar. Okay. And, and the reason they did that is the calendar year in the old calendar did not begin with January. It began began on the twenty second of March. Really, really. So I didn't know order, that. In order to in to make sure that they got the right end of the year, when they say 1703-04, that's actually what we would consider 04. That's January, February, and part of March oh. of 1704, according to our concept of January to January. Okay, I understand that now, because the year then was March to March. Yes. So, to be accurate. Okay, that's really interesting, because then is. that would... That would represent to me that those tombstones were put up post the new calendar, so it wasn't even done in the time where that occurred. If it says 0304, yeah, they're replicating the old documents. Okay, but I'm just Whether, talking about the tombstone itself. If you go to the cemetery, so. well, there used to be a convention that they would write it. 1703 old style. It was yep. an OS 
And that's what the old style refers to when they were using the Julian calendar. And that didn't stop until 1753 or something like that. So all of our early records are dated according to that, the older calendar. <laughs> and I've just decided it's not worth trying to convert them all because nobody's going to, without sitting down and explaining it in a footnote or something or other, after 300 years, nobody's really going to give a damn about 11 days worth of time. <laughs> I hear you, but but understanding, so if someone says or asks, I think, you know, us as the steering committee, I think it's really good to be versed in that um, because that's something, you know, I wasn't really aware of at all. I mean, um, but I think it's important to have those, that information, you know, because if people do ask, the actual Founders Day is this, but you know, well, technically, I'm happy to share. <laughs> I love it. I can't wait till your uh, to your your talks. <laughs> I have to say, me too, because I every time we have a meeting, I learn some little tidbit. Seriously, well, um, I'll, uh, I'll when it comes out, I'll send it to you. I just gave a talk at the Hatfield Historical Society, or, or I did a webinar for them last Thursday on church and town. That's right. Sort of the 200 years of evolution and getting into trouble and saints and sinners and that sort of thing. <laughs> um, but they're going to put it on YouTube. They filmed it. They're going to put it on YouTube. That's great. So when I get a notice that it's up and running, um, I'll send it out if you want to. If you want to watch it, I think it, it went over pretty well. I got some good comments. So. You know what, that is so nice. I just want to say, Peter, that's so nice because they've had such a hard time this year and it's been so disruptive with the pandemic. They were very organized and they put a lot of effort into all their events and to have it all shut down was terrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I could do a, a similar kind of thing for, for Deerfield as well. Because um, part of what, what this stems from is I digitized all of their church records and all of their town meeting records uh, for the town of Hatfield. So I had the records and I figured this was one way. What, what I was really trying to do is give them something that they could access and use for genealogy and for you know town history and whatever, but anybody could get to them. So you don't have to go to the town clerk's office anymore and get the book off the shelf and bug her and then trying to find a place to sit, sit down and look at the records because they've never been published. But yeah. what the town clerk did is take my digital versions of the church records and the town meeting records and put them on the town webpage. That's so, so cool. Now, if, if somebody's doing genealogy, I just heard from a guy in California who was doing his genealogy in his eighth eighth great grandfather came from Hatfield. And he was delighted that he could just simply go to the vital records uh, for Hatfield because Hatfield never published the vital records. Deerfield at least published his vital records up to 1850. There's a whole <laughs> book of them and most, a lot of towns in Deerfield or in uh, Massachusetts did, but Hatfield never published theirs. Oh, wow. So wow. the only way they, anybody can deal with that genealogy is go to the town clerk. And uh, now she doesn't have to spend her time dealing with that. She just says, go to the web page and this, she gives them the, the uh, link and, and they're off and running. So we can, you know, we can do the same thing here. I've got the South Deerfield church records. I've got the proprietor's records, the town meeting records, the selectman's records. I'm working on the tax records. So there's probably eight to 10,000 pages of records that you could that you could post on online and anybody, you know, could use it in terms of historical studies of Deerfield. Is there, you know, does, uh, speaking of web pages then, you know, or the town website, is there a limit on what we can post in the web page? No. 
Okay, so we well, could it, we could it, put all your information on a link from our webpage, right? Yep. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that would be fabulous. Yeah, because well, Peter it puts it. Do it for the three fifties. Because if you have a certain storage piece in a separate website or a cloud that Peter has, you can link it. Um, but in talking with Casey about our website and such this week or last week about um, storage capacity and things like that, um, you know, if we direct certain things as much offsite as possible, then it's you know it's doable because there's so much well, only so much storage yeah, yeah. available or memory. One of the things, yeah, one of the things is it's not so Carolyn, it's not so much the number of pages, it's how many megabytes or how you know gigabytes or whatever of data you've got. So what I've done is I photographed those the records page by page. I've reconciled or edited the photo, the pages so to make the writing clearer and stuff and then recombined the pages that go to individual documents into a word doc so that it's laid out in the same way. And I've done a little bit of preface talking about the records and stuff, but then I can make a PDF version of it. So I can take a 200 megabyte document and, and drop it down to 19 megabytes. Wow. So, well, you, you, you know, you can, and th those are perfectly readable. They're just in a different, you know, format. So you can, you can put an awful lot as, uh, on, an awful lot of those records without a huge amount of data. Although it sounds like a huge amount, uh, it, it doesn't take much to store it. Okay. Well, we, we'll definitely, um, however you want to handle it, Peter, but we definitely want to connect it to our webpage so that people can just go to the town website and connect. Well, so that's, I mean, it, it isn't now, when I talk, talk about Hatfields, they're storing that data as well. It's, it's part of their web storage. They just, you know, say, click on this key and, and you go to the um, town meeting records um, or the church records or, you know, whatever you want. Um, but it, I mean, you could call the town clerk, um, Emily Sizich, okay. and just ask her, you know, how, how big these files are and, and whether they have any trouble storing it, but my sense is they don't. Well, they wouldn't put them up there. But she yeah. was delighted once I've done it because it saves her a huge amount of time trying to look up people's ancestors. <coughs> yeah. Great. Okay. Oh, Next I am. Um... Uh, let's see, here we go, I got Oh, I'm on page two. All right. <laughs> Town Common. <laughs> what finally happened? <laughs> so I heard, uh, so Carolyn, Casey said to make sure you talk about logs, but um, the trees were moved to the lumber place. Is it begins with an L up in? Lamore. Lamore lumber. Um, that's what I thought it was, but I wanted to make sure. Um, and we were, the town was asked to go mark the logs. I don't know if that occurred or not, but I guess they're being stored there. Um, I didn't want to call Thayer Street Associates until I confirmed what was going on with the trees because, um, you know, Kevin was supposed to connect with Peter about where they were going to be stored and if the town had a place to put them or not. And if the town had a place to put them, you know, was that something, you know, were we going to be able to work with um, whatever type, whatever place we wanted to, um, because that's more along the lines of fundraising, you know, and the steering committee would create the design if we went with a CNC laugh design for whether it be a plaque thing for the wall, a trivet or something along those lines that we had talked about at the last meeting. Um, so, I guess not knowing the status, if they're up there still at Lemoore, if they were marked up or whatnot, kind of like leaves it a little bit up in the air. All right, I will check with Kevin tomorrow and um, I'll let you know uh, where, 
I knew they went to Lemoore. I did not know that they had to be marked. Jen, Jen do you know if they were marked? I don't believe that they've been marked. Um, I actually had to move the other branches I had asked Kevin because Sue Antonellis didn't want the other branches that you wanted for writing utensils. So, so we talked about potentially creating writing utensils, but that wasn't a definitive. And at this juncture, I don't think we're going to be able to, to do that unless Thayer Street can do that. So um, I am more than happy tomorrow morning to call up Thayer Street to see what their capabilities are of creating that. Um, I just didn't want to go ahead without having that information because um, last month it was, we were talking about it and then I got an email from Kevin saying that it was happening. So it was just like, it happened after our meeting last month, I believe. So it was just some confusion because like I had said at last month's meeting, um, he had mentioned the last time it wasn't supposed to occur until July 1st because of the new fiscal year, but things change. So we have to be flexible. Um, yeah, so it's a work in progress. I don't think that they were marked. I know that they're over there. So if you want my help facilitating talking to Kevin or, or you know, Lamour or whatever, because um, the actually the chief just, I had mentioned to Kevin and then he was there. And then all of a sudden the chief was moving the branches. So. He just picked them up and moved them. So well, um, I, I think what we need to do is sort out what's there because in terms of Kevin and I played telephone tag for two days and never managed to talk to one another. Well, send me but an email he, because I'm he's very good at getting back to me. It you know, I, I called him about a couple things. I said the branches yesterday and that I needed to know where these things that he was making for hand sanitizers. And he called me back at the end of the day. And then today he was in and he goes, we're playing phone tag, but you know, they're already done. And so he, you know, he, so if you want me to facilitate that communication, absolutely send me an email, what you need. And well, I think the first thing we need to do is make sure the logs are marked. So if Kevin's driving up at that end of town, would you just have him make sure that the logs get marked? Marked with what? Like, so just so, so Casey, Casey, during the conversation we had last week, we were talking about the website stuff. She told me about the logs and she said that Lamar had reached out and wanted, wanted to make sure that the logs were marked. Um, just so that way they could tell that they were the town, so they weren't used for anything else. Um, I guess I'm, I'm assuming that's what that is. Um, I don't know how they would be specifically marked, but some notation letting them know that they're they're the town's trees for just, that. Just okay, something fine. pounded in, like you know, like a thumb, big thumbtack kind of thing, saying this is the town of Deerfields. Sure. Yeah. So I can call tomorrow and make confirm that. That's no yeah. problem. Yeah. Um, cause like I said, Casey is the one who conveyed all of that to me. Yeah, so, um, with other stuff budget and, yep. <laughs> you know, yeah, I'll, I'll follow up on that tomorrow, Jennifer. Thank you. Well, if you. If you want, I, I can follow. I'm down here in Deerfield now, so I can drop over at the office or Kevin could drop by the house or whatever. I mean, I think you got, um, if, if the lumbers is secure, and they're willing to store it, I wouldn't bother to move it again. It's yeah, gonna have to, it's gonna take a year for it to cure anyway. Yeah, we're not worried about them um, moving it. It's just more destroying it, <laughs> right? Yeah. So we, well, I, I get, I, you know, I get that. It's out. Uh, uh, and it. in terms of, I, I think when you talk to the, the folks that are talking, we were talking about pencils or, or whatever, is ask them what they need as raw material because we may be able to just cut sections off of those trees and forget the branches entirely. Yeah. Well, the kids were, you know, every kid thinks that they're swords or whatever, you know, so they were right behind the dugouts of the field. So kids were like picking them up and, you know, fooling with them. So um, Sue wanted them to be moved. <laughs> The chief just moved it to the other side away from the dugout so the kids wouldn't, you know, poke each other eyes out. Yep, I absolutely get that. 
Yeah, well, so, maybe we can, uh, you know, if we can't uh, figure out what to do with the trees, maybe we can turn them into raw material and uh, Jay can work with them to create dugout canoes. There you put go, the, Jay. Put, put the kids to work. Give them, give them the adzes and the, the fire tools and let them, let them create dugout canoes. Good. I think coffee tables would be awesome. I was meeting with Denise Mason and she says, I would have one, I'd buy one. But how much of a demand would there be for an actual table is my concern. You know, you wanna sell something that's going to be purchased, not just decorative in the, I mean, like we, something could be created for a table in town hall, if that's something that, you know, um, with leftover wood that isn't utilized, there could be something done for that. But part of it depends upon how big a tree we're talking about because I have- The trees are big. It, that have, was the 10 by- I have, um, a, I have tables that are like that big. That's it, 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 It's the whole trunk. Yeah, that's the trunk. You just, that was you just the, cut it across and, and, you know, and about that thick and polish it down and it makes a gorgeous table and it's got all the tree rings in there. And you can actually count the rings and tell how old the tree was when they cut it down. And from this I had Kat Kroll sat stood next to it and she's like five foot or <laughs> so she the tree is just as the the girth of the tree is as tall as Pat Kroll is. So I have a picture of that. You know, that's that's a very marketable product if it's not hollow in the middle. It's not it wasn't, it wasn't uh, we, we we may want to turn those into profit things for the uh, nonprofit. You can we'll have them we'll have them cut into table thicknesses, and I'm sure we can. Uh, I'm not going to volunteer to do this. I've done it once already, uh, but I have one that's uh, about four and a half feet in diameter that's resting against my wood pile at home, and that's exactly what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to sand it down and uh, make it into a table, and, and it's awesome. The thing with tables is you can always buy the legs. Can you? Pre-made. Pre yeah. Yeah, okay. That's gorgeous. So you can always buy pre-made legs to put whatever <laughs> dimensions you want. And, um, We're yeah. having okay. We got, we, got, <laughs> we got multiple things we can do. The hell with the pencil, we'll make tables. <laughs> well, that's, that's an option. But the thing is, is that we have to look at we have to look at cost. We have to look at a viability market interest. Uh, I mean, you know, just because there's like two or three people who might be interested in one, you know, what are you going to do with the rest of the wood? So that's why we're talking oh, about I, doing those other pieces. And you can I, make so many different things from that. Um, yeah. but but you know, remember, remember though, fundraising is not something we can do. Fundraising is what the nonprofit can do. So we can work the steering committee can work in conjunction with the nonprofit to create an, you know, to create the item, and then the nonprofit can sell for for that purpose. So um, I think okay. you know whatever is decided. I think at this point it's determining. I wrote down what questions to ask Bayer Street Associates. What do you need for raw materials to create writing utensils, to create tables, to create wall decorations? How long does the wood need to cure for? Um, is there anything else I should ask at this um, juncture? Because uh, those questions will be able to guide me or guide us along, you know, um, uh, time-wise. If it, you know, if something could be made right away, then you know we could start selling something right away. Versus it needs to sit and be there for a year because it'll crack or whatnot, like you talked about okay. last month. Um, I, I think something very, you know, utilitarian, like a, a cheese board or a bread board, um, you yeah, know, that, that, was, that, that can double down as a trivet, you know, um, would be. That was one of the items that was, uh, that was talked about last time um, yep. was creating that, um, like a cutting board and have Deerfield or something um, with the seal and the 350th on it, I think was one of the other items we had talked about. Um, yep. Yep. I mean, I think there is a, a market for people, you know, a few people buying, you know, a, a very expensive piece, 
but I think the majority of people, if, if the, we have items that are under a hundred dollars or around, oh, yeah. Yeah. I think people will, will definitely contribute and buy it because they would, you know, they would like it. And it's, if it's <laughs> useful, if it's useful, like a breadboard or trivet or something, that's yep. even better. Yep. Well, that's but, why I was thinking if we kept the cost under, you know, 50, even $50, you know, could potentially be the, mar the price point, you know, it, even if, it takes a certain amount, you're, you could be making 20 to $25 profit, you know, uh, could be a hundred percent markup, or you could do something a little bit, you know, more elaborate or less elaborate and have different price points because of the size of the trees. Um, we could probably create multiple, multiple items. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I just had a thought that, um, I did woodworking in high school and I don't know if they even still have woodworking in, in school, but if Smith Vogue, because we have a, we have three students this year that are going to Smith Vogue, or if we want to put on the Facebook page, if there's people that want to, um, you know, that have woodworking skills to make these boards or even somebody that's a blacksmith that could make like a, a metal seal that we could stamp the wood with and make emblems, you know, like putting it out there to see who would like to show their art and their craft um, and represent Deerfield. Well, we could have somebody create a design that would be more of an artistic piece, but, you know, to make it professionally done, I would, and especially the fact that these, you know, you only have so much material to work with. Having uh, Thayer Street Associates, you know, who does the mill work, specifically work, you know, with an, we could do a contest for an art design that I don't foresee that being an issue, but giving that to somebody to do along those lines, I think that would be um, too risky for, for that. I, I, if we're going to do it, like we're talking about, we want it to be well done um, and having somewhat, you know, but you don't different know. pieces. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's appropriate at this point to do that. Um, well, you don't know who you have in your community. You could have people that are like, you know, professional woodworkers that have done it just like Jay has. He's taught it for years. And I mean, who knows? I'm just saying that it may be a possibility that somebody could, you know, do a design, but also be able to craft it. And, and you know, um, you but, never know what somebody wants to donate to the town. Right. I hear what you're saying, but at the same time, I think, you know, looking at skill level for what we're looking to do for the 350th, I think, you know, that could be something done on a smaller scale if we wanted to with after the initial pieces. But at this point, mm -hmm. um, you know, waiting to continuously see if people want to volunteer stuff is um, we're, mm -hmm. we're, you know, we're less than two years out at this point. So we've got to solidify things. And if we're doing fundraisers to have everything in place, for the celebration year of 2023, we have to start moving forward with uh, fundraising pieces at this point. So doing an artistic design is not out of the question, but at the same time, you know, there's so many ideas. We need to solidify, pick, choose, move forward. There's too many uh, variables at this point. We need to drill down and, and keep on that. Um, that's not saying that if someone were to come forward, you know, if we posted something, um, you know, that's an option. But while Jay may have done that in the past, does Jay have the capacity to do that now? You know, and, and those things? No, Jay doesn't have the materials and the tools where we know, because well, Kevin is the one who referred me over to uh, Thayer Street to say that they have the capability of doing the CNC lap, doing intricate design work and things like that. Um, I'm just using Jay because of knowing his history. I'm just using as yes. an that you never know who's nope. No, I hear what you're saying, but at this point, um, I, it's, no, it's I just, yeah, it's just moving forward. We don't have time to spare anymore. If this was a suggestion last year, that might have been doable. But if we need to wait and have this wood cure for a year, you know, that's waiting until April of next year um, to even start working on items. So it's it's just really not feasible at this point. Do you think it would be <laughs> worthwhile trying to get uh, an estimate of board feet or something out of these? Oh. Of what? Board feet, uh, and you know, I mean, how much how much volume have we really got? I think if we're going to any crafts people, they're going to want to know that. What's the dimensions of what yep. you've got to process? I'm yeah. just wondering well, if it'd be worth my, you know, taking a tape measure and going up to the lumber yard and just doing some 
measurements and see what what in fact we've got. You know, I think I think that's a good idea, and, and that could probably be asked of Kevin if Kevin's going up there to mark them. Jen, yeah, is well, that I a possibility? With, I mean, I'm down here. I can go up with Kevin. Oh, well, Peter, that would be really nice. First, I want to see that they haven't been marked yet. And then, yep. you know, That's fine. Let, you know, talk tomorrow. I can email you and and just see what's happening, what's happened. Or if, if nothing's happened, then maybe, Peter, you can go over. Do you have my number? My phone um, number? Can you email it to me? I don't think I have it. Yeah, I, I'll send it to you. So uh, that may be easier because I may not be on the computer. I may be outside working or something. Sure. My email's ATA. You know it? Yep. Okay. I got it. Thanks. <laughs> okay, let's move on to update on outreach to local businesses. Um, I, I spoke with um, Tom Peabody from the Polish Club. Unfortunately, because of the current circumstances, um, they've been very tentative to make any firm commitments. He said he thinks they're within a couple of months of coming back to the table and considering dates and things. And he said, don't worry, we're gonna do something. I just can't give you anything firm at this point. So I said, so if I don't bug you, should I wait like, two or three months and check back in. And he's thought by late summer, um, they would have more timely meetings. They would get back on track. But he said, even right now with their own functions, everything is in hold pattern. So this is where the, where the Polish American Club is at? Yep, yep. Um, I, um, today at uh, DPH yeah. webinar, um, the governor wants everything to be fully open by August 1st. Of course, right. it's subject to, you know, what the COVID cases are doing and all yep. that kind of stuff, but yep. tentatively August 1st. So okay. I think That's by the end of the summer, mm -hmm. so the, your, his estimate to you is probably accurate. And then okay. everybody will start being able to plan. Yep. We'll also know about boosters and what the plans are going forward for this next coming winter. And I think if people have some kind of plan on how we're gonna make it through the winter when everything is closed up again and stuff is circulating, including the flu, then we'll be okay. I, I think we're gonna have this hanging around because we're not gonna get that 15 or 20% more people to get herd immunity. So the, yeah. there's gonna be continued low level virus circulating for a while. And so I'm, I'm just really glad we have another whole year before our celebration, because I think yeah. it's gonna take this next year to get sorted out. Yeah. And that that's that's really good date to know because playing into Tom thought, you know, within a couple, three months toward the end of summer, that'll play into that. Cause he also said, They've got so many widgets that they have not been able to fully open back up or, you know, have events and so forth. And he said once they got a handle of that, he'd be able to comment. Um, well, Wally, one of the things I was going to do was run a clinic, see, approach Tom, because, you know, we had a pretty good um, uh, connection for, um, you know, when they had an outbreak there. So I, I thought he would be open to having us run, say, a clinic right there at the back room of the Polish club. So um, I will, when I outreach to him on that, I will continue to outreach on the 350th too, just yeah. so he doesn't forget. No, it, he, he was very much, don't worry, you know, don't we're going to do something. But I, he said, I just, they haven't been able to assemble enough people to talk about it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I know we have to follow up with a lot of other businesses, um, you know, like um, Atlas Farm and Bonita with um, warm apiaries. But I think this is sort of the theme right now that nobody really wants to make a decision because they can't even do their regular business right now. Yeah, I think we need to wait till approach them later this year, um, you know, and just get on their radar. Right. So that mm -hmm. way moving forward for 2022, they should, you know, hopefully we'll be able to solidify some dates for 2023 
Yeah. Um, and that's hoping there's no more, there's not a big fluctuation with variants. Um, right. Exactly. For COVID. Right. We just have to, you know, fingers crossed that we're moving in the right direction yeah. here. Just encourage yeah. everyone to get a vaccine because what happens when you have that low level circulating, then there's more possibilities of mutation. And that's, and that's why it could stick around longer is because mm -hmm. it keeps mutating and will not have ever get herd immunity or hundred percent, um, you know, protection. So mm -hmm. we've got to convince people to take, get the vaccine. And, um, I don't know, but anyway, uh, following up is, is, in here as well. I don't have anything concrete yet because I haven't actually reached out to any parents, but I um, did contact the schools and um, Frontier and I was hoping that the class of 2023 would um, want to work with us and have special things happening in their graduation year. And um, I know uh, Jen, Jennifer had talked about, well, maybe we want to do 2022 too, but um, it, it depends on what we can do. But I, I, I just thought if we reached out to the elementary school for the sixth grade class of 2023 and the senior class of 2023, it would be you know a good thing. So I was trying to follow up with the schools and connect with the parents or something. Cause I, I feel like if they were, um, if we incorporated them and, and connected them with some of the stuff that Peter's talking about and Jay's talking about, the kids would actually get be really enthusiastic and, you know, would go off on a tangent that, you know, us as older people might not be as excited about or not even think about. So I, I, I felt somehow we should get kids involved. One of the things that I think I messaged to you after was when you did reach out to the school um, I didn't know if there was a drama or theater for the That's high school, idea. because then I thought it would be great to try to work out the, um, you know, have them see if they're interested in creating a play um, to just kind of represent what maybe the 350th means to them or, you know, some historical pieces into it, however they wanted to do it, kind of, you know, leave it up to the, to the teacher, um, you know, just to kind of get something um like that because as i mentioned i reached out to the act um theater last towards the fall of last year but with covid and everything you know i didn't really hear anything back solidifying anything and there wasn't i didn't get really any peak interest so i didn't know i thought also it would help be an integral part of the school um curriculum for the you know whether they started you know maybe because we're a couple years out, maybe it's the sophomore years, you know, for the seniors by then um, when they start planning it or even talking about it. Yeah, uh, no, I think that's exciting. I, um, that's why I wanted to connect here before they got out of school so that, you know, we could have some startup for next year. Somebody would be starting to do something in the fall. Have, have we heard back at all um, from the teachers that were interested um, who were at, um, at the meetings a couple of months ago? Um, I haven't seen any other emails come to the Deerfield 350th email account, um, but I also know that, you know, they were um, communication, I think, with Holly or Peter about the curriculum for the elementary school, the high school, and they were interested in uh, doing the multicultural, um, you know, festival fair that we were talked about doing in August of that year. I reached out twice via email. I had no response. Peter, I don't know if they connected with you separately. They, they did. Uh, I sent them some, some material to, to read and whatever, but I haven't heard anything back since then. The other thing that we also told them is that there had been a lot of curriculum developed Correct. already about 10 years ago through PVMA, and that they really ought to look into that first before they decided to go off and reinvent the wheel or, or whatever. So they may have found material that they could adapt or just use right off the bat. And uh, I haven't heard anything back since then. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, w I have to follow up on, um, I'm trying to do a social worker thing through the DIG group. So, um, so I have a little subcommittee with them. So I'll just follow up and see if the subcommittee can get 
you know, see what they're doing. So. So do you want to do you want to check in with a drama uh, just to check and see if they've got a drama club then? Yes, I will. I put that down for notes for when I talk to the um, classes again. I'll reach out to the see if there's a theater. There must be a theater person there, whoever's yeah, in charge I was, I was of that. Because I, 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 I know they had that they had pretty good art uh, theater there, didn't they, Holly? I thought so, I, like the, well they did, and then there was a big gap. But I thought that um, Max um Cheryl is that his last name the band director could be because he's I really think talented. that he, he resurrected either a musical or something theater wise okay I'll reach out to him because um uh his his uh I know his wife so I'll, I will reach out to him yeah she's his wife does programming in at the elementary school so okay okay I'll talk to her and then see what she knows and talk to him maybe yeah okay yeah i'll, I'll or, do that for the I'll report for next meeting on that. thank you uh, very much um, I, I think it would be great to have them you know in like that I well i just think we have to nail down more we have to get more volunteers and we got to get more enthusiasm and how you get more enthusiasm is through kids and yep. you draw in the parents and um, the parents might be interested in like the 5K or the parade or something like that. Or the kids might already decide that they wanna do a float. And then, you know, that generates excitement throughout town because the kids are already, you know, figuring out they're gonna do a float for their class or something, I don't know. But it just, I know kids will bring good energy and, we, and that's what we need is some more good energy. Definitely. I was talking to one of my neighbors down the street, um, they're I think they're in their seventies, and she recalled the three fifty or the three hundredth and different things. And I said, "Well, I'm on the steering committee. If you'd like to volunteer for something, we're looking for volunteers." She goes, "Let me know in your next meeting after tonight, you know, because she wasn't available tonight. Tonight is, but um, so uh, hoping to get some more buy-in, you know. And I think word of mouth is a great way to." Um, and then we can talk about that in the new business, because that's something um, I know that Holly and I had a conversation about. Um, so. Farm well, I just want to say I agree. I think most people are really excited about it because um, there was so much success from the 300th. I mean, I like I said, my memories of the 300th, I didn't even live here, I lived in Berniston. And it was a really, you know, that it was a great celebration. So, you know, I, I feel like we can just pull in people that had been around for the 300th, then um, we'll, we'll have a lot of enthusiasm in the community, so. Well, what I'm thinking right now, since you're talking about local business, is to, um, and I don't know if uh, I could have a town hall print them off, um, would just be those flyers that I made up with those little tab things. So maybe we could put them up in uh, Sisless Market, um, you know, if there's any bulletin boards at the post office, uh, for both post office and, um, you know, anywhere else you can think of besides town hall. I mean, I can put some in there and maybe the library um, to, you know, to try to get more volunteers so they see a tangible item that attracts their attention. Um, There's you know, just such higher. limitations on people being able to get into town hall, library. So well, we're, we're, I'm working with the library right now. We're trying to have a phased in opening plan and it will be fully open August 1st. Um, the town hall, I'm not gonna open until after town meeting and stuff has been filed, which is June 12th, so the end of June. And the reason why is because we have really no capacity and there is some, you know, a couple people that do not want to get, which is confidential, but they don't, they don't want to get vaccine, um, vaccinated. So, um, why it's, and, and we as a town can't force people to get vaccinated until why it's under emergency approval. So, um, we just don't have capacity. So we're not opening the town hall until all the town meeting stuff has been filed, election stuff is done, all that in case people get sick. I was just referring to like in the lobby where people can go and drop their bill payments. Oh, or oh yeah, you could put it up just there. To put a, just to put a little thing yeah. where people could yeah. pull the tabs I'm, off. I'm, um, but that's it, all, nothing, you know, and then the library, 
Um, Cause I know uh, they've posted on their website, you know, like they have browsing hours or people can come in and right. check it out. So it was just having it, you know, like one poster. But, but I think we'll, we'll be open for most things by August 1st. Yeah. So. But, but like having it, you know, having someone go into Syslox or Atlas farm and just, you know, seeing it there, seeing like, you know, volunteer, because that way, if we're not able to talk to them, they can see it and go, oh, I'm interested in this. You know, like when you go to the grocery store, for example, River Valley Market has one of those huge pork boards outside, you know, you can put something there because people from Deerfield shop there, people from Deerfield shop, you know, a lot of places. Um, but that's why I was thinking, you know, if we ask Atlas Farm or Sussex Market, the post office, you know, just have it inside where you know, they might offer flyers. So I think the post office in South Deerfield has a cork board. I'm not sure about the one in, in, in Old Deerfield, but you know, if we put something up, I don't, I think it's just a way to do another piece of outreach. Um, and then uh, is the transfer station really busy on Saturdays? Because we could always maybe, you know, hand out flyers on a Saturday. I'm, I'm open for that, you know, if the weather is not bad, just, you know, to try to uh, gain more interest because not everyone is on social media. Um, and we could also put a PSA out or a press release, not a PSA, a press release, you know, um, pertaining to that this event is coming up and we could possibly get that in for free, um, you know, in, in, in uh, paper media. That's, that's a really good idea to do a press um, release. Yeah. And um, this at the transfer station, if you're looking for people that are not on social media, usually Tuesdays and Thursdays are Tuesdays older. Tuesdays and Thursdays are good. Yeah. For older people that are not. Um, I'd like to call that retired people. Yeah. Okay. That was me today. <laughs> I went to the well, transfer station today. The it was pretty busy. Saturday transfer station is wildly <laughs> busy, but usually that's, you know, people that work during the week. Yeah. And, I mean, there are some older people, but if you are truly looking for people that don't have um, access to the, uh, you know, internet or social media or something like that, is your. I know more... people my age who don't like social media. So, you know, it could be younger or older. Um, cause that's one of those things, like some people just don't like it at all. Um, I know so. I hardly do it. <laughs> um, so yeah, is, so, um, Jen, I don't know if you're listening here. Thank you. Um, if I emailed you a form, a document, could you pin, print out maybe four copies or five copies? The only reason I ask is they're in full color and I don't have a fancy printer that doesn't eat up ink. Sure. I appreciate it. Sure. And it's the document that we approved before. So um, I don't think you, do I need, do we need to vote on that? Well, no, no. I'll just, okay. Jennifer, 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 if you could do 10 copies so that we ha could have you know, put them all over the place. Uh, sure. That would be good. So Where she'll do 10. Do you think it would be worth uh, while at this point just to getting a list of businesses in town and not asking them to do anything at this point, except to consider this is coming up, consider what you might be interested in doing um, as part of the celebration or well, you're going to do it under the fundraiser. That's going to be one of those questions that I have regarding the nonprofit, because one of the questions that came up um, that you're mentioning, it, it's under local business, so I hope it's okay to say this. So putting on my nonprofit hat, um, two of the questions were specifically, if a business, sorry, I'm just pulling up the emails to make sure it was right. Um, if a business entity or, or an individual wanted to... Um, wanted to, sorry, I'm just trying to get the email up, who want to donate services or goods rather than a financial donation, how, you know, do they talk to and coordinate with the steering committee for that? Because um, to, the nonprofit was created to avoid any ethical issues in solicitation. So if the nonprofit is soliciting a donation from a business and the business responds to the nonprofit with, we would rather donate this particular service or this particular good. 
for example, let's just put out there locust printing at the top of five and 10 says that they want to do all our, meet all our printing needs. I'm just, you know, throwing that out there as a example. Um, how would we work that? How would that be dealt with? Um, it, should come, it should come through the nonprofit because, um, you know, the steering committee is, is a town committee. Right. And um, we're regulatory, you know, we have regulatory, um, some regulatory issues with most of all the businesses, whether it's Board of Health or building inspection or just whatever. So um, it's probably okay. better not to um, have anything to do with our, you know. Right. Be... But I think that's what's bothering me momentarily at least is I could see going in multiple ways, not just one. Because it's, it seems to me that once we get the parade committee and other committees set up, is that they're going to need those kinds of resources whether it's printing or whether it's, uh, you know, labor to do certain things or, you know, I'll give you five guys for four days over the course of the year to help you set up doing something. Somebody, and There's I can see the steering, the, the, the nonprofit doing some, at, you know, at some level, but I can also see the committees are going to need access to that information. And so do they go to the nonprofit to get permission? Well, I see, I, I see Jennifer, I see Jennifer being sitting on the steering committee, being able to see the big picture of needs, and then also being chair of the fundraising um, arm that she can coordinate the fundraising arm. I, I actually feel <clears throat> that that Jennifer is so well organized that all the needs will eventually be met um, without any issues. Don't you feel, Jennifer? I don't, I'm not trying to make no, you do more work. No, I don't feel that way at all. Like I want to re respond to Peter and Jay, thank you for laughing at that. Um, so Peter, my response is, while I hear what you're saying with a need being presented by a, a subcommittee, whether it's the parade committee or one of the others, um, the issue is there can be no asking by the town at all for anything. So if someone, you know, uh, someone asked if, if, if a subcommittee wanted to have, um, let's just say, uh, a, something catered or uh, for food donation or something like that, you know, they can't go directly to Sislux Market and ask for, can I get 20 sandwiches to feed my volunteers? Or, um, or another thing of, you know, having the woodworking done of, uh, you know, can you help me create the frame for my float? Um, because then that would look like particular favoritism, like the, this business did something for the town, now they may want something in return. So they, you can't really do something like that. That would be along the ethical violation. Holly. So, but hypothetically for the parade, if as it's starting to form and there's going to be need for sponsors for various contingencies that are gonna come in, whether it be like a fife and drum band that is hired in from elsewhere, someone like Cheslick's Market may say, we'd like to sponsor such and such. Can't so, do that. Oh, sorry, I'll let you finish. <laughs> so I guess, is it gonna get so complicated that for anybody to sponsor anything that the parade committee is gonna have to go to Friends of Deerfield and say, we need sponsors for all these, can you find them? So what it's going to be from, from my understanding and from what we talked about previously was everyone, you know, the steering committee kind of gave a budget. Like when you talk to Sunderland, you had a general idea of what their budget was for putting on the parade. So taking those financial numbers of what the guesstimate was at the time, we, the friends of Deerfield have that information because it was given to them prior to even the formation, you know, as right, the, right. the thing. So it would be 
soliciting, it would be the Friends of Deerfield contacting local businesses, contacting individuals, doing mailers, you know, letters, phone calls, all of those things to come up with the funds specifically to meet the needs of the, uh, the amounts that were given. So while, um, if we want to say, would you like to sponsor the parade? It would be a general donation from that business to the parade. And all of those um, names of the businesses could go on that banner that I was talking about that, you know, if the Friends of Deerfield marched in the parade, they would have like a banner of, you know, the parade sponsored by all of these businesses. So it wouldn't be a specific float. It would just be the pot of money to the parade. But, but people that I've talked to casually, a few people um, over the last year would rather sponsor something than give money. Well, they would rather if they want to sponsor name. something, are you saying like they want to sponsor a float? Well, then they can mail in a check, make a lot, an online donation and say they want it to go towards the sponsorship of the parade. But when the money is donated from the Friends of Deerfield to the town, to be spent on, you know, whatever the items are in that, you know, that that year account, that's how that's going to be done. So there's no way to spec specify what particular item it's going for. I mean, because what if you say, I've got a $10,000 donation who wants to go towards like the Mummers and, you know, the Fife and Drum Club. I, I don't know. I'm just throwing names out there. But you've got 10 grand for that specific things. How are we going to know that that money was specifically spent on that from that particular person? It's a pot of money. If they want to mail in a check that says I'm supporting the, the Polish club float, um, great. But there's no way for us to specifically give it to that float. It's, it's a pot of money. And you tell me that, uh, or you say as the, you know, like the, the Friends of Deerfield is donating that money to the general 350th fund. There's no way to divvy that up. I mean, it could be said if that money's donated and said, hey, we raised $50,000 to put towards your parade. You know, if there's a thing could come in and say that this person specifically earmarked it for this, you know, on their check or their letter or something like that. But there's really no way to divvy that up because the town cannot solicit at all whatsoever. So you as a parade person and any of your sub sub members, subcommittee members, you can't talk, you can't ask a business, hey, do you want to donate towards our towards uh, towards the parade? You can't do that at all. I understand right? that. Yeah, that's but what if what if what if somebody comes to me and says they want to they want to sponsor a band? Then you say, hey, you know what? Unfortunate that's awesome. Thank you so much for your interest. Um we're going through the donations through the Friends of Deerfield um, in order to meet our ethical, you know, things, if you want to say that. Um, but all of the funding is going through the Friends of Deerfield. Yeah. Here's Jennifer Remillard's information. Here's Chris Harris's information. Give them a call. Yeah. I, I, I appreciate the situation. I appreciate the whole rules for the nonprofit. I totally get all of that. But I think my takeaway from earlier was that people were going to be able to target something they were sponsoring. I think a lot of businesses like that. Um, not they're just their name buried with 14 other businesses, but their name out there in front of a float, a band or whatever that they are sponsoring it. You could still do that because while the pot of money is there, you know, so like say, there's 50 grand donated cumulatively to go towards the parade. And we have, um, we got a letter from Sysox Market saying, you know, I want my money to go to this. Well, you're not necessarily going to know that that their 20,000 or their $5,000, I'm just starting a number there, but you can put a, a little banner or a little pl placard on a float and say, sponsored by Sysox Market because you're still getting that donation you're not asking for it they're mailing the friends of deerfield a letter saying that they want to specify this particular float or to sponsor it and that information can be shared with the steering committee there's nothing that says it can't be and you're just giving them recognition i guess uh, i think what holly is saying though is if say the mummers 
yeah. a wicked expensive. What do oh, we yeah. say? Or fifteen or twenty thousand or something. So so we got a donation for fifteen thousand from somebody for the mummers. If if we hire, I mean, if they gave the money to the friends of Deerfield for the mummers, and said that, and, yep, right, and we could guarantee the mummers would be hired. Yeah, that was their price. Right. Um, you know, and then we would put something in in front of them saying this has been sponsored by X corporation or whatever, right? Yes, you can totally okay. do that. All it's right. just that when you're speaking with that business and, you know, like say that entity comes to you and says, you know, I really want to sponsor the mummers. I really want to see them in our parade this year. You know, what's their cost? You have no bar bearing or no regulation telling you you can't share a cost with them. And then they want to make a donation. You know, I can't accept that, but here's the person who can and let them know you want it to go to the mummers. So when that money goes to right. you, like I was saying, if, if it's earmarked for a specific thing, the, the friends of Deerfield can say, you know, here's $50,000, $15,000 was, was donated by such and such, you know, by Pete, by Pete Thomas, because he wants to see the mummers in our, in the parade. So, you know, here's a list, but not all the donations are going to come in like that. But I hear what you're saying. And I appreciate you breaking it down the way you did, Carolyn. Um, because like, if, if, a, if a check comes in that way, or an online donation is made that way with a memo or a comment, you know, and or something that comes into the Friends of Deerfield, we're going to definitely share that information. Um, and we would definitely, I, that entity would not hold that back, because that's important. It's just that, if, um, you know, you can't guarantee that their specific dollars go towards it, you could be a lump sum and say, here's a breakdown of whatever of these particular businesses that want to support, or these places want to support this. Because the only problem could be is that you get, you know, maybe you get $20,000 donation towards the Shriners and, you know, you still need to pay for these other things. Maybe you got a different deal. So, Maybe I'm not being clear enough. My apologies. No, it's okay. We, I think we've said enough. I okay. think we can work around it, Holly. Um, I think if people wanted to be do a specific sponsorship, I think we could get the dollar amount from the friends that would make sure that they were in, were in fact sponsoring that particular item or persons or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. I think yeah. we can work that out. Um, yeah. Could we have a five to 10 minute break? Is that possible? Or if, if not, um, could you move on to the next item without me? I need to step away for a minute. Yeah, sure. I, I don't want to take a break because I haven't had supper yet. <laughs> I just I just need to just, use the, the, the just, rest of your home. Just, so just, sign off or just make your screen go blank for a minute and we'll, we'll continue to discuss. There's a couple of things I wanted to bring up too. Um, yeah, what were they? Oh, uh, okay. So I was talking about businesses. So we got uh, that partially answered. But uh, interesting enough, my son-in-law showed up um, last weekend, and we got to talking about the parade or the the three hundred fiftieth and stuff like that. And he's and then he said, "Well, how's that brewery doing?" There's apparently, and I, Carolyn, you're gonna have to help me here, but there's apparently. One a, a fairly major brewery is opening up. Treehouse, Treehouse, huh? yes, Treehouse, Tree Treehouse Brewery is uh, it bought Channing Beat, and they're right. opening up very soon. So here, if you go to their webpage, they are talking about the reason they're here is for all of these events and and outlets and people to come and. I'm not a beer connoisseur, but my son-in-law says that's the best beer in New England. <laughs> they're, they're paying five bucks a bottle for that stuff. No, it's 12. Well, whatever it is. I mean, it's, it's very expensive. It's very expensive, but the way they come across, they, they would appear to be prime candidates to involve in our celebration they've got land up there oh, they've got breweries and yes. i'm just wondering whether somebody should i already actually i've already mentioned the fact that i hope that they would participate in the 350th okay um 
I know we had already reached out to Berkshire Brewing. I, I don't know that, what, what's the one at Ink Candle? It, I should remember. I can't remember powder, the name. It's powder, yeah. it's powder keg or, I mean, I, I can't. Powder remember. something. Hollow. What? Powder hollow. Pot, powder powder hollow. hollow. Oh, thank you, Jen. I should know it since I signed off on the license, but I forgot. Um, I have not, I mean, I've not been over there, but, um, you know, I know Berkshire Brewing had already committed to do um, some kind of, you know, Deerfield 350th special right, well, brew. Here, here's something and, and to I'm keep in mind that I didn't know is that Treehouse will know, definitely do that. Tree, sure. Treehouse worked in consultation with two other breweries to create a commemorative brew. They actually came up, they're the ones that came up with the recipe. And then they got other breweries to go in with them to produce that particular brew. Mm. And if, if, if it's not too late, uh, or you know, the the brewery we've already talked to uh, isn't adverse to it, we may that may be a good way to go is get all three concerns involved in producing the same batch or or the same brew, high quality brew for this event. Well, we're, we're trying very hard to make sure that they all work together so that there's synergy in the three breweries that are right yeah. next to each other. So, so um, Peter, come to the ZBA hearing on Thursday night. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, we don't want them to be pressured into doing something so they get their ZBA waivers. We'll do it after Thursday. Yeah, but it, Thursday. It, just, it just struck me as a... Uh, I mean, my, my son-in-law is a pretty good salesman. Um, he works for NBC Sports and stuff like, you know. Um, and uh, But it just sounded like a, a really good opportunity. If we weren't doing something about it already, I would suggest that we probably ought to pursue it. But it, it seems to be taken care of. So, I'm, uh, I'm gonna, uh, you know, um, uh, Peter, don't worry. I will, I'm already trying to figure out how we can make sure that something happens with them. And as well as all the nonprofits, I mean, I'm hoping the nonprofits will do more too. That our year, you haven't heard any more from PVMA, have you? No, they still haven't coordinated their talks for okay. 2023. You know what? Also, I I will call um, Tim for um, next month. And um, and who's do you know who's taking Phil Zay's place? I don't. Um, they're they're going to have a new CEO, but I don't know when he's going to start. I thought I heard he was starting in July, but I don't even know who it is. So um, I was probably told, but I remembering people's names is one of my worst capabilities. Well, no, it's just um, I know I, that I, I'm pretty sure that um, Phil is already gone. Isn't wasn't he supposed to be gone at the? end of this month or I'm, middle of the month or something? I, I'm sure I've been told, I just don't remember. And I, I think the thing we can do, uh, Carolyn, is let Barb, um, who's part of my, the part of the history committee, but right. she's the public historian for Deerfield. Okay. And it, it, she may be a good liaison to talk to them about the three fifth. Well, I was just gonna take the opportunity when you know, we, we usually have, meet with the nonprofits fairly okay. regularly. Well, and I, so you know, I was going to follow up on, you know, what the heck are they planning? Because yeah. we haven't heard too much. So, yeah. I'm, well, you know, I was, okay. so it's going to be on my ask list. Okay. We, well, you know, let me know if it's in between meetings and stuff like that. If you think the, okay. the, the meeting went kind of wobbly or whatever and I'll well, say well who, who's ever chair who's ever chair of the select board usually tries to outreach to the nonprofits at least two or three times a year so okay we you know usually wait towards the end of graduation time for the schools and then hit them up before they take off for the summer okay so let me we have uh let's move on then uh, we've got farm bureau you have a little bit of re to report holly um, I just had one thing. I reached out to UMass um, to see about 4-H and the, the gal I know, I, I got um, referred over to a gentleman named Thomas Washkevich. 
And he's a Hadley guy, but he heads up the 4-H in the area. And he wrote that there are 4-H in surrounding towns. He did not say there was one in Deerfield. Okay. Um, he said it's a little early to alert them as the rosters change quite a bit in, you know, over the next couple of years. He said he would be the contact and he would let the 4-H clubs know of this opportunity. Um, he said, because it's two years out, he was wondering if we have a date, you know, that they might start thinking about it a little more seriously. Um, the other thing that um, when um, I saw that on the agenda, yeah, I just was just thinking out loud that the Franklin County Fairgrounds is, you know, trying to raise money for, you know, um, just because they, COVID has been so tough on them, but also because they're, you know, it was just in the newspaper, as a matter of fact, the sloping, you know, uh, expenses related to erosion and stuff. And so um, not to add to Jennifer's workload, but what I was thinking of is maybe we could work a connection with the um, Agricultural Society and do something joint fundraising or have be in support of some activity, joint activity for 2023 or 22, it doesn't matter. Um, I, I feel like they haven't made a decision about the fair in 2021 this year, but hopefully, you know, they would have it in 2022 and 2023. And so it seemed like since we have such rich agricultural heritage that the Agricultural Society, uh, some joint activity might be a really good thing for both the Friends of Deerfield it would be more high profile, but would also help out the poor fair fairgrounds. What did you envision? I don't know, some kind of, it will be hard this year because I'm, I'm not sure if they're going to go forward with the fair, but, um, you know, sponsor some kind of, um, you know, how they have uh, contests for, you know, the produce contest or whatever. So, mm -hmm. you know, sponsor some kind of prize or some kind of, you know, raffle or something um, just so that it's raises the, you know, Deerfield's Friends of Deerfield's profile, but also has some joint activity that would be fun and that would help out the fairgrounds as well. I mean, I just was thinking of it from a synergy point of view. And Michael Nelson, who is the president of the Agricultural Society, is also on the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Health in Montague. So I've known him for years and we're, we are working with NRCS, Natural Resource and Conservation Service, which I chair the conservation district and so we, you know, working on that a lot. So going back and forth, it's just a lot of, um, you know, opportunities for some, you know, some fun thing. I don't know. Why, why don't you, since this is um, the, I don't want anyone to say that we're doing anything wrong by talking about it. Um, send me something regarding that in an email. So that way I can bring that to the, uh, the Friends okay. of the Field meeting. Um, because I think that would be You know be, what I'll do? I'll, I'll reach out to Michael so that, uh, just to make sure, be, so you not waste any energy. I'll reach out to Michael and see what he wants, you know, if he's interested. Sure. Uh, and then and maybe he even has some ideas and then we'll, you know, could I'll pass it on to you. Yeah. And I'm sorry I stepped away. Did I miss anything important? Nope. Um, I heard from UMass and Thomas A lot Washington. of discussion about beer. Oh. <laughs> Thomas Weshkevich is the 4-H person for the area. Yeah, I heard you say that. That's okay. awesome. Okay. So, um, uh, cause, yeah, because I had it in my note that was something you were going to send me. So is that something you want to take on to reach out to him when we get to 2022? Um, I'm going to just forward this to you uh, okay. for now. And can and you spell we, his, do you have the spelling of his last name? I'm going to forward you an email. Okay, cool. Thanks. Oh, well, telling me too for the notes. Um, okay, got it. Okay. Um, I had a I have a suggestion with the 4-H guys. The 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 fair for the 4-H they develop it's competition, so they show their animals. 
why don't we find out where the fair is and have them come in one to two weeks before the fair as a practice run for exhibiting their animals in a competitive situation. You mean you having, actually, them, having, having them, them in Deerfield? Yeah. Yeah. And you may even get a couple of the people that would judge at the fair to come in and critique. But that, I mean, the, the thing of it is, if, if they don't have the chance to practice, uh, they may not be able to show their animals as well. So it's an opportunity for them to, as a practice event, we get the spinoff for it and both of us win. And we might be able to tie it up with another event. I, I don't know, I'm not looking at the calendar now, but if we had an event in August sometime, uh, that they could, you know, it could be part of something. I wouldn't do it as a separate uh, kind of event necessarily, but if we had a, uh, a day where we're having ethnic food and who knows what, it could be part of that day long uh, yeah, celebration. The, uh, multicultural uh, fair is going on in, um, in August uh, on the calendar. If it is part of that. Um, I mean, yep. this is a suggestion, but it, it seemed to me it's a way to involve the four H'ers in a positive way for them and a positive way for us. I mean, they, they're going to be showing their animals to the kids in Deerfield and they can go up and, you know, have a sort of a petting zoo and, you know, whatever. Uh, but. Um, the other, the other, that made me also think of Cider Days. Um, Cider Days are in November and they have in the past always had something at the white church, you know, like some kind of cider testing, a tasting and then dinner. And so maybe we would want to also do something with cider days. Cool. You know, and that, and that would be, you know, do some other event um, along with cider days that, that weekend. Um, Clarkdale is very much, very active in that. And is one of the original you know, founders of Cider Day. So, um, you know, we could reach out to Ben and see if, you know, there was something special he could do for 2023 or even the end of 2022, because it is November of 2022. Um, yeah, well, there's a kind of respond to you, let me know. I'll get a hold of Susie and she'll rip. <laughs> she was a classmate of mine. Okay. Well, they might be very interested then. All right. So uh, let's move on to the website, Jen. Okay. So I spoke, um, I went through all the channels. As I had mentioned at last month's meeting, I emailed Casey um, because we have to go through getting a warrant approved by the select board. And um, Jen, if you are listening, this would be the perfect time uh, to chime in about the website because as we voted on, we're getting the Wix platform, but there is a process in order for Wix to get the town's nonprofit, or, or excuse me, non-taxable uh, status, tax-free um, piece. So I'll let Jen talk about that. Well, <laughs> I don't know what um, more to say than if Jen, you want to make an appointment with me so that I can know exactly what you, you know, how I can help you because I mean, I know that there's nonprofit forms that needs Casey's signature and, and I usually ask her and then she sends it to me and then I forward it on so that we're not taxed on it. So if it needs to be like you know, password and all of that. I think, are, Jen, are you gonna be the one that's managing it? So in my conversation with Casey, um, it was the town, so you or her, which she kind of, you know, said that she would speak to you about doing it, would create the login, be the owner of the site, giving me editor access to be able to uh, put all the data on the system because it's basically um, the end user design for the website. That's all it is. 
Um, we have the domain, which was already donated. We just have to pay for the platform, which is an which enables us to um, design the site. Um, so it would be uh, creating that. Then you could email, because uh, all you have to, and I can talk you through this, but basically you would have to email correspond with Wix once you create the login in order to get in touch with them about the tax-free status. Um, Brenda had already given me, um, she emailed me the, the tax form, so to send over to Wix. Um, it's just that there's no phone number, it was just email correspondence only. Um, so I didn't want to go ahead and do anything without, um, you know, getting all that stuff situated with Casey. So once that is done, then you could go ahead, pay for it with the town credit card by entering it on the site. Once it's in the site, I wouldn't, you know, no one else is able to see that information, just the owner, the admin. Um, so you would be the admin um, and I would just have editing status. Um, and I can walk you through all that process because I've used Wix for other other websites that I've designed. When are you free to come in and do this? Um, give me one second. I'm just checking my schedule. I'm curious. Do they even charge tax? I mean, yes, they do. They when do. You, when you purchase when you purchase the domain or the um the platform, whichever plan you use, uh, they do charge a sales tax. Whatever okay. Massachusetts okay. charges. Um, not, not all sites do that, so that's that. I was not sure. Yeah, unfortunately, they do. Um, I'm available this Thursday or Friday. Um, as long as it's not around noontime, I'm pretty flexible. So Friday morning is good for me. I'm in at eight a.m. I uh, would nine o'clock be okay. Perfect. Just, do you know my back door? <laughs> I don't know where your office is um, or like which side. Where, where the trees are cut down. Over on that building, that side of the building. Yes. is. Do you walk in like and you'd come in where the assessor's office is? No, it's, it's closer to the ball field, like closer to the elementary school. On like, the railroad track side. Yeah, no, I, I understand that. Um, there's just it's, a you'll, there's like a whole series of windows that yep. face the ball field, and you'll see my desk right there, and there's a door right there in the corner. Oh, okay, so it's along the back part. Okay, I was thinking more along the lines of where the trees were, not the back part where the ball field is. Okay, no, the trees are there too. Yeah, they cut the ones right there on the corner. That's where that right. big one is. Yeah, that. Oh, the trees are still there. No, that's where that the stump is. Oh, it's, okay, misunderstood. So around that L-shaped corner. So yes. do I go around the corner in the back and there's a doorway? Yes. Okay. And you can call me. Let me get Yeah, I'll do that. Probably be easier for, for me just to. What, what you can do is you drive in by the senior center and where it says, do not enter, you can just go ahead and enter and you can park right behind the, you know, where the police are in the town hall. And then you can just go bang on the window. <laughs> Jen, Jen will come say, oh, hi. <laughs> I want to give her a heart attack, yes. <laughs> I'll give you a call, but thank you. Um, that'll, be, that'll be helpful because um, Casey said she was going to talk with you on Friday last week and that we'd work that out. Yeah, so. I took half a day on Wednesday and Thursday off. And so Friday was just like, you know busy and then yeah so she did mention it and so I knew that it was it was on you know my site and so I knew I was doing this meeting tonight and I thought okay well I'll just touch base with you and um we can meet and that's the best way if you come in and we can just like do it and yeah no problem at all um just you know that's why I'm thinking you'll have to create that the you know the login with your email at work and then um it'll basically be you corresponding with Wix as the entity to figure out the tax free or you know or the tax uh, exempt status uh, with them and then once that's set up I can walk you through the other piece 
Okay. Yeah, I do it with everybody. So what you're going to put on this website is all our events, right? And details yeah. and stuff. So it's, oh, okay, great. It's going to be, um, we can discuss what drop downs, but basically, you know, the, the students, the grad students that are working with Peter for the history piece. So we'll be able to rotate that based on new students coming in. Uh, we'll be able to change out the content. So we'll have the history piece. We'll have the calendar of events. Um, you know, we'll be able to do uh, some photos and linkage to the social media. So um, if we don't have a lot of uh, data storage on the site, depending on which plan is the, you know, the best value, um, we can link it to an Instagram account so we can just upload a bunch of photos there and to, you know, a YouTube thing, whether it's through FCAT or your own channel. Um, so we'll be able to do a lot of that stuff and, and tag it on. But we can put, um, you know, we can talk about the history of the town. We can, you know, talk about the steering committee. We can talk about a description of all the subcommittees, you know, what we're looking for volunteers to do. People can sign up for volunteering um, and, and all of that. Okay. Good. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Casey was clear during our conversation, she wanted to make sure that there was no referral over to, for fundraising. So, um, we won't mention that at all. Um, you know, it, cause if people want to make a donation, they could just email or because, you know, I, I don't want to trample on that. And I don't know if that's something we can get Mr. Costas advice on of just, or Lisa's, I think is her name to the other attorney mm -hmm. as to just say, to make a donation, you know, contact so-and-so. So, you know, so we're not, we're not soliciting or we don't put that in. For more information, contact, you know, and then they have the email. So if someone says they'd like to make a donation, um, we can refer them over, I would assume, if someone reaches out to us. Yeah. I think you can. You just the way um, way it's worded. Just run it by Lisa Mead, okay, Jennifer. Oh yes, definitely. The other Jennifer. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Too many Jennifers. But there, there should be some way to have some referral or some link to the Friends of Deerfield. That is not a violation, and that you know will give people you know the idea of where to go for that. So yeah, if Jennifer, you figure out the language that needs to be on there, we don't we don't have to publish that page or that info until later. So it you know we could just do the calendar of events, you know, tentative calendar, so people know to hold those dates for like you know the gala for the five k for the parade weekend, um, mm -hmm. you know, because those are the bigger events that are you know that we've already have established. Right. Um, so are we um. Have we sent our calendar to Northfield, by the way, an updated calendar? No, I haven't spoken. I haven't sent her anything recent. I think I had just sent her, you know, what we had at the time. Um, okay. With those core dates. Um, I, don't, I mean, there hasn't been a lot of activity on that, but, you know, we should probably periodically update them. Update them. Yeah, and then update and ask for a update so that when we have other events, we're not... Um, we know what's at least what they're planning to do. Okay. Well, once once the web page is up and running, though, um, if we just provide them a link to that. Oh yes, you know, they can yeah. then monitor yeah. our calendar. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep, we can do that. But you know, we don't we don't have that at the moment. So, but that's good to know. So, I'm gonna write it down, Holly. But that might be a great reminder moving forward, if you don't mind. Yep. Sure. <laughs> Thanks. Just making a note. Yep. Um, and, you know, we can definitely have on there about volunteering and, you know, break it down to, you know, what would you enjoy doing? Um, that way we can uh, try to get more people involved too. Um, if you want to see my content of work of how I design, the Friends of Deerfield site is now live. Oh, um, cool. Yeah, I just published. You have to enter it right in, uh, but it's friendsofdeerfield.org if you want to, it's just so you can see what I what I can do as a designer on the user end piece. Um, I'm coming here. 
Thanks. Um, okay, so I don't think there's anything else on the website right now. Uh, so it's in pro process. That's it's good at this point um, to have. So. Okay, well, moving on to new business then. Uh, process for town hall support. Holly, would you like me to take this one or do you want to take this one? Um, I'm going to just start with one small thing and I don't know what I did to my screen, but it's like teeny. Oh, oh. I, sorry, I was about to say we can see you. I know there there's everybody. It's like I just I hit a button. And it's like, yeah, there's everybody went. Um, so this is a minor little nudge, but is it com compiles with other things. So Pete is wonderful with running the meetings and taking the notes and doing the minutes. I've been doing my part to support this committee by drafting the agenda, getting information um, from Jennifer Gannett for the telephone numbers and the web links, because it's all more complicated than just doing an agenda. Um, and that's been going well. What I don't understand is why there isn't a reaction from support staff in the town hall. So I sent the agenda to be posted. It got posted according to um, Jen Wallace. I gotta get the right Jen here. Um, Jay emailed me before the meeting saying, do we have links? And I resent him the agenda, but my first thought was I'll go to the town page and show Jay where to find it on the town site and it's not there. So anybody who wanted to participate tonight had no links had no ability other than this committee because it yeah. wasn't posted. It wasn't added to the calendar. No, it is. It, it was it, on the calendar. It just didn't have clickable link. No, it wasn't on the calendar when I looked this afternoon. No, no, no. It has been on the calendar. So there's two different calendars. And so if you go to the calendar on the main page, yep. it's there. If you go to 350th, as a committee, it may not be there. <laughs> I, I went to the to the main page and it wasn't there this afternoon. Well, I I hundred percent know that it's there and I can I can look like right no, now. No, I can tell you it was there. It's just not wasn't clickable, and I know uh, <laughs> it's very frustrating not to have clickable links. I mean, Jen sent me. Well, you can just, copy and paste it if. You know, you can copy the link and paste it into your URL and it will work fine. It's, it's, it, but if you go to the, the calendar on the main page and click on the date, so today the 27th. So if I click on it, it says Finance Committee and 350th, and then it has the agenda for each of those meetings. It may not be on under boards and committees because there's, there's a couple different settings and Pat was on vacation all last week. And so I was doing it. And so she puts it on to the boards and committees page. And the way that I learned was just to put it on the calendar. And so I, I always just reference everybody to the calendar because it's just, it's, it's there. Can you I, I posted it just so you know, last night around, I don't know, 8.30 PM or so I posted it on the, the Deerfield 350th um, Facebook page and it it was there. I mean, like if you you can see, yeah. Okay. I posted the direct link. But, I copied it there. Okay. So, uh, well, I, I, go I, I have to say, I, have to say, I looked. Thing. I didn't see it, um, but I didn't get a reply, which I normally get a reply from who? From someone that it's been put out there. Because I asked for it to be added to the calendar and posted. Jen Wallace said her responsibility is only the paper posting. Right. So that's actually what's required by the. the I understand that. So, but if people want to get on to these meetings. Right. They're not going to get it because they're not going to town hall. 
and they're not going to have all that information. So I just, I want to know what the process is because it's frustrating to me that as a volunteer, it's so complicated. And I don't know why one person can't just handle it. Because I have to... Amazing for you to say, Holly, because I have to tell you the number of meetings and postings that I have to do and I have to reword everybody's agenda and then go to Zoom and put in the Zoom. And it literally takes me at least a half hour to 40 minutes for each person's agenda to fix it, to format it from Word, to then store it to the our S drive, to change it to PDF, to then send it you know, to postings and make sure that it's done. Then there's two separate people that in postings have to post it legally outside in the foyer and onto our website in the correct place that it doesn't need to actually be posted as well as notify the board members. So typically I try, I used to send it to every single board member and I was like, you know what, I'm going to send it to the chair and the chair can pass it out because it is posted onto our website. I mean, and then every time that there's a change to the agenda, such as a time or an add on, it's a revised agenda, which we have to do the whole process again. So you're talking planning board, ZBA, Conservation Commission, Historical Commission, Ad Hoc Senior Center, uh, um, Energy Committee, Housing. Okay, I, I, I understand what you're saying, but for this committee, you know I've been proactive. I've asked you for. Everybody is. It's just a matter of how much time do I have to do with all the other grants and assistant town administrators? Okay, okay. Let, me, let me finish what I'm saying, Jennifer. I've asked you to set up three months in advance. So I have the links. I do that. You have done it for me. I know, but it's, sometimes it's not possible to like, actually we have two Zoom accounts. Okay, all right, let me just finish because I know You've had to take a document, you've had to convert it, you've had to do all that. I've been doing that for the last several months. So when my document comes in for the agenda, it's done. There's no reformatting, there's no adding anything, it's done. So I, I guess I, I'm trying to be a team player here, but I also like, I feel like we hear excuses all the time with how busy everybody is, but- that's an excuse, Holly. That's that's. I apologize from the bottom of my heart that you think that it's an excuse. We try our best, and we try to manage all the others. Like, thank you, Jennifer, from switching the you know from yesterday to today because we have two accounts. I also am thankful to Tim Hilchey for Thursday because I have to have two computers on my counter at home, and I have to start a meeting and then turn it over to him to run as well as MA that's gonna actually run her, her meeting by herself on her Zoom account. So we don't have to purchase another Zoom account. So I apologize that you think that we are not being proactive and doing what you need for this committee. I'm, I do, I apologize. And I will try to do my best so that you, it's not messed up and that you get contacted every time you send me a posting. I, you know, I, I, I feel you're being defensive when I think I've been trying to be proactive and you have given me three months out of the Zoom account. Um, I know that this last month things had to get changed. It got changed. Um, so all I'm trying to do is not bother you as much, trying to not interrupt your work as much and trying to be proactive. But what I'm hearing from you is almost like, it doesn't matter. Absolutely not. Don't put don't put those words in my mouth that it doesn't matter. It matters a lot. And that is my job. And that's what I try to do every day. I even so I got a, a comment from the energy committee because David Keith didn't hear back from me from eight o'clock in the morning yesterday um, about a posting that he had because I am so quick at responding and getting those out and posted and and getting details out to everybody. That is absolutely positively ridiculous to think that I'm thinking that it's not top priority. It is, and we try to do our best. It is like, it's, you can't even imagine 
the workload. When you have a public hearing, what goes into a public hearing and how many things and how many steps that we have to do, not just you, I'm talking about other committees. So I apologize that you feel that we haven't given you 100% because I, I don't think you're know listening I'll to tell me. Casey and I'll tell Pat that, you know, this is something that you guys are feeling and we will step it up. I think, I think you're not hearing all my words. I know you're busy. I know that things have been, let me finish, please. I know things have been hectic. And so to prevent bothering you. You're not bothering me. I keep telling you that you're not bothering okay. me. That is okay. my job. Jennifer, let me finish, please. In order to be proactive, because I know how busy things are, I tried to be proactive and ask for these codes several months in advance. Now, if we have to change them, we do, but we happen to luck out of the three you gave me, the first two went fine and you only had to change the third one. So I, I, I guess what I'm saying is I'm trying to help as well to get stuff in the best format to you so that you don't have to touch it because I know before I would give it to you, then you'd have to get the codes back to me. And I thought, well, that's just so redundant. Why would I bother you twice? Let me try to help here. But, you know, I just, I guess I assume that if you send somebody a message, you'd hear back from them that it was done. So anyway, um, that, I, I don't want to dwell on the point anymore. I think I've made my statement. Well, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I honestly do know our office works really hard. So I'm sorry, we'll try to do better. But um, I, do, I do know people are working many, many more hours than their 40 hours a week. And they try very hard, but there's just so much juggling. And I know I, it's not, it wasn't clickable tonight on the agenda. It was on the calendar. I went to the calendar and I couldn't click on. So Jennifer had to send it to me. So it is very difficult for the public to join if there isn't a clickable link. And, and that is frustrating. So we'll, we'll try to work on that. It doesn't need to be clickable. You copy and you paste it. And you know what? I'm sorry. I worked 11 hours yesterday, 12 hours today. I know. I know. Everybody appreciates that, Jennifer. Seriously. I guess I'm not understanding something, too, when you talk about clickable. I mean, I just went to the agenda you sent out and I clicked on it and I'm here. I, I'm, 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 I'm not sure what's not working. Um, and mine, I didn't, I wasn't able to click on the what Holly had sent out because I went to the, to the agenda as well first and, th and that didn't click. So I went to the calendar, which usually does ah, click. Mine, mine clicked. Oh, mine I, just, I just went to the agenda I got from Holly and I uh, clicked on it and here I am. Car Carolyn saying she went to the one that was on the town page. And that oh, one. okay. So yeah, I, don't know. We... I, I went to Holly's agenda first because I pulled up her, I, pu I put her email in. I, I have an account for just a Zoom things yeah. because I have so many. So I, as soon as Holly's agenda came out, I put it in the, um, I can, you know, my folder. And then I went to that tonight and that was, did not click. So I went to the calendar which usually does click and that didn't happen and the reason why i can't click and paste is be, i mean it has to be clickable for me is because i can't cut and paste accurately so um you know i can't do it any other way it has to be clickable so jennifer send you some sent, scissors. yeah i know so jennifer sent me the link that was clickable tonight okay. and that's how i got on i that i didn't want to be late so that's why i called in initially and i text jen and asked her if she was handling the meeting and then she in fact did it and um was doing it and so she sent me the link um jennifer okay. remillard i don't know if you wanted to add anything um i think my only my only comment is um you know is just you know when working for the website it just took three emails to get a response and you know i had the conversation with casey of 
You know, if you send it to council, hey, just send me a response back saying waiting for council to respond. So I know she got it. And we had that conversation um, the other week. And, you know, I understand that, you know, town hall is busy, um, but I think sometimes it's just, just a quick response is helpful um, for, you know, on, on those, those aspects, just because it had been a month of email, you know, follow up, um, just asking, uh, just to have a phone call. It wasn't even for an answer. It was just to have a phone call on something. Um, and not regarding admin, but just, um, you know, like the support regarding uh, the mailer piece. I think, um, you know, in, in Holly, uh, or Carolyn and I had a conversation the other day um, regarding that topic. I just figured I'd mention it tonight about, you know, how to go about getting an insert because we have the funding as of July 1st. Um, we can, we have access to the town funding and uh, as we mentioned in our previous meeting, I think it would be beneficial for us as a steering committee just to mail out a postcard with the Facebook page. Hopefully the website will be all set um, and the social media. And you know, if we wanna do a link to a survey, but basically letting people know that the planning is going on, visit you know the town website for the meeting times, um, and the Facebook page and that type of stuff. I think, you know, if we mail out something in July um, or yeah, it might be better to do September because people are on vacation in July and August, but just to get more feedback because it um, just appears at this point, you know, getting some things in mailers uh, is, is a little difficult for into the tax things, um, you know, and that that piece has been a little, I think, frustrating because, you know, we thought we could send something out in the fall and then, you know, before this tax bill here, and I've already got the document all set so I can send that over to Carolyn, you know, so you can get that over for any other time to be cut in thirds. But I know we had the conversation about, getting um, David or Dave to, to work with, with getting that over. Um, but I think it's just, we're trying to do the best we can at getting people interested. COVID has obviously put a damper on that for everyone um, and has made everything more complicated. Um, but it just feels as though we, we as five individuals, including you, Carolyn, are not going to be able to pull this off a whole year's worth of stuff by ourselves. That's asking too much. Um, and that's what we're trying to do. And sometimes I don't, you know, I don't always have the time to post on Facebook um, or whatnot, but I think we're getting, um, we're getting to that and we can, um, you know, get that piece taken care of. But, um, you know, that's pretty much for for me but I had I had that conversation the issue was resolved you know we're I'm now meeting with Jen on Friday so you know uh I think just getting an initial getting that taken care of or whatnot after the fact is is a little bit easier and I, I just would uh, like to add that yeah. um we are a volunteer group. Um, we are a few years into meeting at this point. I think it's two full years, roughly speaking. And I'm frankly nervous that we don't have the staff, we don't have the number of people we need. And I am frankly feeling very overwhelmed and I want to stay on this committee, but unless we get some more people to split out these responsibilities, I don't know if I can continue my commitment here. And I, I, I just, I want to, I, I just want to know that we have a means to solicit people. We've been talking about soliciting people for as long as I've been on this committee 
and nothing has changed. We've got a lot of things planned. We've got a lot of fun things planned, but it's not gonna come together if we don't have people to step up. And we're inching closer and closer to a deadline of when we really need to have active subcommittees. Um, there's, there's a lot of work to be done. Well, I, I can just tell you that uh, most people are, are overwhelmed with COVID and what they are doing with, you know, having to work extra and, you know, the town hall staff is definitely working extra. The select board is definitely working far more than, I mean, this is more than a full-time job at the moment. It's 24 seven. And we are still trying to do our normal operations. And um, so it is very difficult. It's just, you know, talking about town meeting, you know, it, it's three or four times more work than even the amount of huge amount of work that we have to do to get ready for the spring. So I'm, I'm not making excuses either. Um, I'm certainly signed on for this. So, you know, but I started this committee because I wanted to make sure we were not stressed out and we would try to, you know, uh, recruit people. And unfortunately, because of COVID, it's been very difficult to get people to participate. And, you know, at all our volunteer boards, it's been difficult for people to stay connected. So we just, we have to adapt and we have to be flexible. So the only thing I can say is we are working very hard to make sure that people try to get out there. And I am trying to bring in more people, the dig group, the, you know, the schools and stuff so that you, you will be pulling in energy and that you will get extra people. So we just have to keep talking it up. And, and I think one of the issues where we were so far out that people, you know, it was beyond what people were really, you know, thinking of, but, you know, we're trying to raise the profile of it. It's, you know, we are coming closer to when we want to celebrate. And so I think people will start joining in. I mean, there, we have excellent people. I mean, the Friends of Deerfield group is, is really organized with really qualified people. So, um, you know, so what we have to do is come up with people on how to spend the money. I was really, really worried about our um, ability to raise so much mon money, but I don't think that's gonna be the issue with the way Jennifer's organized you know, her group and the people that are participating in her group are, you know, Tim Hilchey, Pat Ryan, you know, Chris Harris. These are really good, serious people. So uh, we'll have the money. And if we have the money, then I think we're going to have, people will come out of the woodwork. So we just have to keep working on it. That's all. Um, I think the Facebook or the webpage is going to help. It, it, it's I'm I'm in a in a way Holly I'm I'm feeling like you are but in a way I'm not because it, it just it is a ways out and, and maybe I'm a little further along with the the committee and the way I'm thinking about it and I've got four or five other people that are working with me on the committee uh, I'm not feeling quite as much in limbo as I think you must be in, in terms of just getting. One or two, I think if you get one or two major events subcommittee out and people working on it, I think the rest of it will follow. And I, I'm hoping that the web page that Jen's working on will be that, you know, one of those important vehicles. One of the other things that um, today, I just got a, a flyer from the energy committee. And I would be curious to know, this came to the resident, but at my street address. And I'm really curious to know what it costs them to do that because whether we do it with a postcard or whether we do it with a, a couple pages in an envelope and sent out, I think it, it might be well worth doing that. Actually, I, I, think... I, I, I see Casey is on. Maybe Casey knows how much the energy committee paid for that. It was a part of a grant, um, I believe. So Casey, did you hear that? I heard it. It wasn't part of a grant. They used the funds from their like line item for part of it. 
we had to split the cost. So there was a cost for developing the mailing itself. I mean, we had the, the information, but we had to send it to the company that did the mailing. They did the folding and everything. We had to pay for the postage. In fact, we just put that through on this last warrant. And then there's the cost to actually do that mailing, like send it out. Okay. So it There's wasn't a, part of a grant. Over a thousand dollars. But it was only like a thousand dollars, right? I think it, the total was 1500. Okay. And I can send Pam's information if you guys want to start thinking about that as an option to do mailings. I've been listening. And what I was going to say is, so um, unfortunately, if you would like a list of what we have to handle in the office, I'm happy to email it to you. It's this, it, COVID has not been, in any way, shape, or form, an easy thing to navigate because everything that we do is exacerbated by the fact that COVID slows everything down. I did have a conversation with Jennifer Remillard about the website on, was it Thursday, Jennifer? Yeah, we talked last week and Jen and I set up, uh, we talked today yep. and we're going to meet on Friday morning. Yep. And I was thinking as I was listening, Instagram and Facebook are going to be our friends. <laughs> yes but it's just we don't always know how to use it I'll be the first to tell you I don't no I've been you know posting on Facebook but it's I don't have a ton of free time all the time to do that on a regular basis so it you know it was just one of those things that we talked about setting up uh, working on and that's been our only avenue we were at the town meeting last year soliciting volunteers um posting different stuff. And we talked about earlier in the meeting about reaching out to local businesses and, and putting up flyers. Um, and I asked Jen if she could print out um, some of the stuff for me to pick up Friday when I go to the meeting. Um, I'm going to email it over to her because I don't have a fancy printer that doesn't absorb ink or use, use so much ink. Um, so for volunteers. Have you thought about talking to FCAT as well? Um, FCAT we've utilized for certain things um, and it's been really hard to get a response for some things because uh, not pertaining to the steering committee, but the What's Up Deerfield that Carolyn and I and Lily worked on in December. Yeah, they haven't been really responsive. They've been very busy with other things due to COVID. So it's been um, me working on certain pieces. So we haven't moved forward with even that. So. Uh, using FCAT right now is not is not something that we're we're looking at. It's just if someone goes into the post office or Sislas Market or something, we can have a flyer up and someone could take a little tab off the bottom to, with our email address if they're interested. Yeah, so well, I can certainly send out custom mails information, and that might be part of the outreach is doing some sort of a mailing, even if it's postcards. We talked about that before you were on. Um, we talked about doing that as of the new fiscal year because then we would have access to the town uh, money of the $10,000. That's at least that one has been transferred over. So we wouldn't be uh, overspending and we would be within that time frame of the window mm -hmm. of hitting that 2023. Yep. Well, uh, yep. We're going to have another 10000 on the warrant. Um, so that um, so we'll have a total of 20000 as of July 1st. Yeah, we, we won't make a huge dent in that for the solicitation. It's just going to be letting people know we exist and, and the mailing. And I think the other mailing we talked about before was the tri trifold piece to be segmented off, whether it could be just a piece put in somebody else's mailer, if that was possible. And that's what we were looking to do in the We were, we were looking for the tax bills, send, a, send something into tax bills case. Remember I asked yep. about that and it just didn't work out. We'll have to approach Barbara you know, let her know that it needs to be in the next mailing and, you know, sort it out. We could figure it out. Hey, Holly, in, in terms of, uh, I don't know how to say this. Uh, I don't mean it in, in a pejorative way, but in terms of anxiety, and I think I've got some of that too. And one of the things that bothers me is we've spent the past six months, nine months, creating a calendar with some great events and stuff on it, but I haven't got a clue whether people are going to respond to the events that we've got on the calendar. We, we, I haven't found a, 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 or 
figured out a way, except for talking with individuals around, as to whether the townsfolks at large have the same um, types of things that we've set up that they that they want to go to. And I'm wondering if if there's some way in terms of a survey, and that's why I was thinking about the you know sending them out to individual addresses, is to list all of the types of events that we've come up with and have spent time developing calendars and stuff to get a reaction to how many of these events would you actually be willing to attend and be part of? I'm, I, I just, I, I don't think that is what's keeping people from coming forward, but I don't know either. And I'm wondering if a survey at this point, after we've been sort of creative and said, okay, we've, we've got the parade and we've got the dinner and dance and we've got this and we've got that. But how do we, how do we, so how do we go out and, and have the response coming back that we know we're on the right track. And if we're on the right track, we're gonna get volunteers to participate. But if we're not on the right track, we're not too far into the process that we can't shift some gears here and there and an event falls out and a new one's added. Um, so, that's sort of what I've been thinking about, and, and I'm jumping the gun a little bit, but that's what I was trying to get across with the, the questionnaire that I sent out the other night uh, uh, to you to respond to. Is this isn't, for the history thing, I think we've got a variety of things that we can work on. I think they're going to be positive. Now the question is, how many people out there are really interested in doing anything towards one or more of these types of options. And that's where I think the, 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 the COVID among other things makes it very difficult to know whether as a steering committee, we're going in the right direction. So I would almost say, maybe it's time now, we've done all the prep work we can. We've got the events, we've got times of year and to figure out some way to, to get that feedback coming into us saying, yeah, we, we agree, you know, collectively, the, you're moving in a positive direction and we're gonna jump on the bandwagon. Um, I, I think if we can get this mailer out, I, I mean, summertime is a hard time for response, but um, people are going to be here for until you know the end of school. If we could come up with um, a fairly simple mailer right away, oh well, we don't have our money until July, but it. Um, so I guess we can't really. Well, I mean, if if yeah. if Jen can get the website up and going. And yeah, I, the website you know, might I know, be... I know you're working on it, uh, but I mean, that would seem to me one way to really be able to reach out to at least part of the population. I can do a survey monkey link and put it on Facebook like I did before. And okay. once the website is all set and able for me to design, I can list all the events there and see what we get for buy-in. Yeah, I mean, I think I would feel more comfortable if I knew okay, we, we, we're getting positive responses. Whether somebody says, you know, I'm willing to be the monitor for the traffic control on you know, the parade or something else, that's, that's gonna come. But it, it just, uh, I, I'm gonna step back here for a second and just tell you why I think we ought to know. I wrote a paper, uh, with Barb Matthews on the Bloody Brook Monument. And one of the things we were tracking is people's memory and, and response to memory and why 
uh, how do they respond to memory over time? So the monument gets put up. That opening ceremony drew 6,000 people. People came in even from the Michigan territories to go to that event. And the 100th year anniversary drew 4,000 people for that event to commemorate <laughs> the 100th anniversary of the Bloody Brook Monument. In 1970, oh, wow. um, now let me think, how, how would this be? Um, 38, 50 years, 88. In 1988, after the Vietnam War, there was another commemoration. 36 people came. They had a picnic on the front lawn of the church and people wandered down and somebody gave it from the Historical Society gave a, a, a brief talk about the Bloody Brook Monument. It didn't draw the kind of response that uh, memorial events had drawn in the past. And, and I'm wondering, you know, we, we had a great time on the 300th, 1973. You know, I'm wondering whether today the population has not changed enough so that we're going with sort of a false hope of saying, look, we've, we've looked back then, all these events were, you know, really popular. We all had a good time. But is the population that's here today the same population? And I, I really wonder. Um, well, I hear what you're saying, Pete. There's a couple of things. We could create a survey monkey like I did last time when uh, to see what memorabilia people were interested in purchasing. We got a good response off of Facebook for that. Um, the other piece is, you know, there's been really no way to advertise some of the things. I mean, you know, you've got Facebook, but a lot, you know, I think once the website is up and we have the events specified, I think we'll get more buy-in. Um, I also think it's two years out. Well, it's a year and a half out uh, before that kickoff would start in December of 2022. So at this point, um, you know, we did get people last year at the town meeting who said, when you get closer, I want to help. I don't have the time now. Um, but I think if we stick with even just doing the, the kickoff gala, the 5K, the multicultural event, and then, you know, we had something in December. So that's only like, or, or parade thing. So that's like five big events for the year. That's it. Um, it's not a multitude of um, an outlandish thing to look at because like when we talked about the gala, we talked about um, the steering committee would be responsible for like the menu option, the decorating, that type of stuff. Whereas the friends of Deerfield would wear the hat to advertise the event, get the ticket sales, work directly with DA, that type of piece, you know, get the place set up. So that takes some off the plate for the steering committee um, for some piece. I mean, you would probably only need about three, three or four people, you know, for volunteering to do the gala. And then to do the 5K would be, um, that was one of the other questions is to see whether or not that would have to be uh, done specifically by the nonprofit or if it could be done directly by the steering committee because all you're doing is paying an entry fee. It's not soliciting for a donation, it's paying for an entry fee um, to, to run a race. So that's a question um, you know, that, that needs to be addressed at, for that. I guess the, you know, I, I guess in part, Jim, what I'm thinking about is we got two different, we've got an audience of potential participants yep. who are willing to kick in the time to run the thing. Right. And we've got an audience of potential, potential attendees. Mm -hmm. And what, what I, I, I'm less concerned at this point with the 
participants, finding them. If we, you know, we're of the whole, we need relatively fewer of those than attendees. I'm curious about, or what I don't know, is of the events that we've identified, how many people in town today are really would really seriously consider attending those events? Well, we wouldn't really have a way to gauge that right now because we haven't been, we haven't advertised. We just literally finalized them, what, a couple months ago, not even? And some of them are still in progress. So how are you gonna gauge whether or not people, the interest? Um, I mean, I don't know in most of the things that, but, that but most me 50 years ago are what's gonna intrigue them today. But most of those events that we came up with are comparable to surrounding community events. They're not just, you know, they were popular and successful events in local communities, whether it be Westfield, whether it be Hatfield, whether it be, you know, Conway um, or some of the other places, they had similar types of events. That's what we kind of looked at establishing the year on. I was just gonna say, I'm not, I'm not so panicky. Peter, I'm not so panicky about that because um, Sunderland and Conway have just been recent, um, you know, communities that have the same similar events. But um, I would was just thinking, um, and actually Casey came thought about this. Maybe we should have Ed Lesko or somebody from the Hat Hatfield um, committee come up and and just say how they um, for next meeting and say how they adjusted for COVID. Um, and how they continue to work with COVID. Cause you know, their whole, um, I mean, their whole activity schedule and everything was um, so impacted by COVID. And I mean, it might be a good way to just get some information again. It was, I, I know it was incredibly helpful to me to listen to Conway and then have, you know, conversations with um, Brenda Wozniakiewicz from Sunderland about- you to to elaborate though, Hatfield has a website they've been able to post on. They've done a lot of that over the cap for oh, okay. uh, two years, I think not, you know, I think they've been working on that for like one or two years, I think. Um, they've got some social media going um, and they have like a core person. Um, it looks like on the email on the bottom of their page because we've been looking at Hatfield as a example. Um, even when I first joined the committee, I think it was in 2019 um heck could even be 2018 where they already have their website up and their partnership and they were doing solicitation our thing was is when uh you know diana was here that's when it came out of whether or not we could do the fundraising piece and i think they had started already really fundraising a lot and we you know had to wait um to do that because we got different information uh pertaining to that later um, you know, we didn't get that right away. We just got that last year. So it's been in progress. Um, and with, with COVID going downwards um, next year, I think a lot of it's going to be, is, is that way is going to be, you know, once the website's established and moving forward with those pieces. COVID, I don't think COVID's going to affect us as much because we're still able to, um, we put it in the, uh, Pete and I did the insert for the, what is it Pete, we did for the town. Um, oh, and town we did, thank you. So we did, we did that. We asked for, we put the information about, you know, contact us for volunteering in there. Um, I'm planning on having another setup table to, to ask for volunteers again this year. Um, and I think once we ramp up with more uh, stuff online and then even talking about doing stuff at the transfer station with with seeking out volunteers that way on the days we talked about um, yeah I, I think I, I think once we get the website up I think it's gonna you're gonna connect with the groups of people that were missing yep you know and if you're doing the mailer uh, I think is gonna be really key and the mailer <laughs> sending the mailer out I think that's gonna be very helpful too well, I, we I, just, I, I think I don't think we need to go into much more of it tonight, but I just think it's something that we, we can think about in, in, in terms of how do we best 
create that interaction. I'm, I'm, I'm really help, hopeful that between, um, you know, the web page and, and, and other social media kinds of things that we can begin to get enough feedback so we get a sense of are we going in the right direction or not. And I think if we, if we know we're going in the right direction, then it's going to be easier. I'm going to feel better anyway to know that if I go and try and solicit uh, somebody to participate <laughs> that somebody's going to show up to, <laughs> to, to, the, to attend the event. I guess uh, I'm concerned at this point, Pete, you know, when we were planning the calendar, you didn't bring out these concerns. You know, I mean, that... I'm not sure I had the. I'm not. I, I. I. It's not that I don't think what we've got on the calendar, from what we've seen in surrounding towns, is is, uh, for lack of a better term, wrong or not not appropriate. I do. I just don't have enough of a sense of people in this community whether they think the same way I do. Well, I think once, you know, we get the new fiscal year here, if we work on the design, which, um, you know, won't be hard to throw together, get that all set, we can do a mailing and get that out. Um, and getting that out, I think we can either do it for the beginning of the summer or we can wait till, like, you know, like how I mentioned, till September because more people would be home, less people would be on vacation, more people might be apt to open. Um, because I think this year people are going to be probably looking to go on vacations more with the vaccines, um, you know, so it might be who of us to send it out then. But if the website's all set up, I'm meeting with Jen on Friday. So hopefully, you know, that'll be good to go within the next week or two and get all of that stuff up. And once that's done, we can link it up to the town site and through Facebook, like we talked about and get it all done. Yeah, no, I, 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 we've got a way forward. I'm, it, I, and I don't, I didn't want this to be negative. It's just, I, you know, it's just some I, of the I things think that we I actually have to wrong. nail down. I would like to nail down the timing of this mailing. I, I think we need to do the timing pretty soon. And the, and the reason um, waiting till September makes sense. But on the other hand, people are so, it takes so long to settle in that the months of September actually isn't a good time to mail because people are getting kids are getting into sports and school and you know so it's just going to be lost in the mess well so, i have that insert is i mean like i have that insert all ready to go for the trifold thing but you know we were it was told basically when we got that email uh, but we can do that we can do we can do the trifold thing we'll just have to get it um to barbara and just say that we're going to do it in the, in the mailing in the fall, you know, in the tax bills in the fall. But what we can do for this mailing, I think we should try to do as soon as we can after July 1st, okay? Because um, people are still not committed to going away in July and the governor hasn't opened up everything or, you know, his target date is August 1st. First, okay. So I think August 1st, um, if that if, if that does happen, I think you will see people out and about. But Do I you, think, I sorry. think July. I think the first week of July. If we could get a mailing out the first week of July, I don't think people. You know, right after the Fourth of July, I don't think people are going to go away yet. And I think we have an opportunity to get people's attention still. And we could just do a postcard. We don't, and which would be cheaper than um, you know a double sided paper folded up in an envelope. If you do a pay, uh, postcard, um, that would that would probably be half the amount of money um, because right. the, mailing, the mailing cost is less, the printing cost is less. So, um, and then, and the postcard would get, would be able to get us going. And then, um, and then we could do a more uh, timely mailing in probably, you wanna do October, to no, beginning of November before the second week of November, because once you get into the holidays, people are gone too, so are out of it. So you have, you really have my, all my years of public interaction, you really have a, a window, um, you know, in really beginning of October through, you know, the week or two in November. That's, that's how you get your public, if you want public, 
participation, that's a little window. The next little window is, you know, after the holidays, when the majority of storms are gone, you have like, people are anxious to get out after Valentine's Day and you have another window before the weather gets really good. So you have like sort of mid-February till, you know, beginning of April and then forget it. People are just all over the place. And so if we're gonna do something, we need to target those little windows. And um, I think, you know, we just have to take risk of, of people maybe not paying as much attention, but I think they're still gonna be locked down in July. So if we do something right after 4th of July, that first week of, of July, I think we're gonna be okay. Um, so that should be our focus for the next yeah. meeting is coming up with the words so that um, it can be all ready to go. We can ship it to the um, printers and have them mail it out that first week. Okay, I just sent you and I CC'd Casey and Jen Gannett in case they needed a copy of it. It's the trifold. It's basically ready to be cut in thirds. If it need a modification, let me know. Because um, that was the one I had done for um, earlier this year. But uh, okay. unfortunately, you know, Pete and I got that email from Barbara saying that right. um, it couldn't be done at that time. So, or... Right. And so what we need to do is we'll just, we'll, um, I'll have Dave Wolf from walk it over and make sure it gets on her radar for the next time they send out anything. And it will either be printed on her thing or stuffed. What Casey? I already sent her an email. Oh, okay. It. You did. All right. Thank you. Hey Jen, do you have a sense from where you are right now when, when the, um, web might be up do you think june um you'd have to ask jen and casey because i i'm i can design uh no problem it's just getting you know access to it which is going to take um take some more time i got um we have our meeting on friday so whatever happens um you know with with wix on that it shouldn't take long once we set it up and get them their information and you have access to it, so. Yeah, because um, like we talked about Casey, I, I told Jen that she would be the admin owner and just give me editor access to the page. So that way there would be no conflict with the credit card or any of that information. Plus once it's in the system, I double checked recently using my own platform. You can't see, you get like the last four digits of a card as the admin. So as editor, you shouldn't be able to see any of that stuff. Right. Yeah, I think the hardest part about all of that is setting up the tax exempt accounts. Yeah. That's what's been difficult for us with other accounts. Yeah. And like I like I mentioned to Jen earlier, it seems that you could only communicate with them via email. So I did not want to be the one to initiate the communication. I wanted Jen to create her own account and you know, or you, you know, before we had the conversation on last week to see how it would work and how to get them that information because there didn't seem to be a phone number to call. It was everything right. was just online, which is frustrating I think for so many users. It is, but they really don't want to talk to you until you have an account with them. That's what happened with a couple of things like Adobe. <laughs> yeah, no, I get that. Um, and it's it's a bummer. I'm just looking for the other document on, on that. So... Um, you know, I hear your concerns, Pete, um, you know, and they're valid concerns, but at the same time, I think we're at the point, you know, with planning where we're not going to have any buy-in or things like that because, you know, we're not able to really see people um, and we're a little, you know, we're a little ways away where I think Tangible. once we're able to show people what we can do when, you know, they can go to the website or, or we're more active on Facebook and social media um, because, you know, frankly, it's only me who's, you know, who's been posting on that. And I have other things. I've been trying to set up the, the 501c3 in order to even be able to fundraise in order to make this happen. And that's been a lot of work on, you know, for my end, it's not an excuse that those things are getting done. It's just, it's just a lot to make this happen. Um, and there's been so many hoops to jump through on that piece. Um, yeah, I, just, I, I think once the web is up and running and the, and the fa you've got Facebook running now, I think if you were to do a, a really brief query and just almost list 
what we've got on the calendar and just see what people responded to. Not that they're willing to participate or actively commit, but what types of events, uh, you know, wh which of these events would you, you know, bring your family to or, or attend yourself or whatever. But sometimes when you give people too many options, they don't, I was going to say, respond, what we're going to say is, what, what do you want to see in the parade? You don't tell them whether you want yeah, to or not. You, you set say, it up, you do it, and you they, they're happy to come. Yeah. I, well, I mean, you, you get to the point of saying, you, I, it doesn't matter to me content. Are you willing to, you know, is having a parade something that you and your family would like to happen as part I, of the 350th celebration? I, I think that's that, a no brainer. But, but yeah, but the turnout at the Sunderland parade was so uh, well done. I mean, I didn't go to the Conway one, but Trevor and I had to participate in the Sunderland one, and it was so overwhelmingly popular that I'm actually not worried about that. Peter. Uh, I'm not. I'm not worried about a parade. I mean, it's just yeah. get people. But that's why you don't want to ask of... people. You just you know you just say we're going to do this. You know. Um, you know, how do you want to, you know, do, do, what would you like to see in it? We want to know how participatory we want people to be, you know, whatever. I don't know, but I think it's, it's not really, we just have to be careful that we don't read too much into this stuff only because it is COVID has changed how people operate so much. And, and I think having, you know, people get vaccinated and opening up um, and getting semi-normal. I'm not saying that we're going to be 100% normal, but um, I think people are going to come out again and they're going to be so happy to have events to go to and, and be social again. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it, it's, I, again, I'm not trying to be negative and, I, and I, I'm, I am positive about all these events. I just, it, it just, there's something in the back of my mind says, uh, you know, I, I like a little confirmation that yeah we're going in the right direction. That's all. So, but I think you you know I think we get the web page up. We've got Facebook. We've got other ways to uh, try to get people involved. And you know that's where we are right now. I think we need to get people involved. And, and uh, as we get closer to the event and we get out of the COVID, I think we're going to see people getting involved. Um, I, I think I think it will. I, I do. I try to be really positive myself. But <laughs> I think people are just they're ready for a party. Yeah. And, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to just focus on having a party year because it's been so awful and we have not been able to socialize and, you know, and, and we just need to take care of each other and have a good time. And we're just going to talk to those breweries, guys. And, and yeah, don't worry. Don't each, worry. Each we'll generate one, interest. You know, each brewery takes a week per month and makes a special brew and sells it at half price. Hey Jay, you had wanted to chime in before with something. Do you, do you remember what you're going to say? Well, I was going to say there's a pitch that we could make of, we're going to have a party and we want you to come and please figure out what you would like the party to be about and help us clarify what we want and make arrangements. I, I think participation is great, but are we gonna have a parade with just people marching and then others watching? Or can we have people involved in the parade and the other events, the animal shows, house tours, whatever. Uh, how can you help to make this happen is my suggestion. You just gave me a great idea of a posting and maybe even for the post <laughs> of mailing, um, talking about, you know, this is our community celebration. Um, what would you like to, or how would you like to sell, or what does Deerfield mean to you? And have them maybe submit something um, on a con, on a, like a, on the website, you can do like a form where a fillable piece, someone could fill it in. Um, so we could we could possibly do that. I don't know if that is an interest because we could we could solicit 
uh, what does Deerfield mean to you? What does, um, trying to think. We have to, make sure, we have to make sure that there's somebody uh, monitoring it, that though, because it can be not good. No, I, I hear you. And it, when it, um, so like if you have a pop-up, like um, if you go to that website I spoke about earlier, just so you could see the design, um, it, there, there's like a pop-up, like join our newsletter or something. You can create a pop-up that comes onto the page and you can have somebody fill it out and it's like a mandatory fillable piece or they can exit out of it. But that would get sent to the email. So um, Jen Gannett and myself as an as a editor, I believe would be able to see those that come through. So we would be able to track that data through the website. Um, and Casey, just so you could see my user and design skills, um, I let them know friendsofdeerfield.org. If you uh, go to that, it's active, so you could actually see what it looks like. Okay. Just so you had an idea of what I what I what I did for them. Sorry, I'm a little tired myself, so I apologize <laughs> if I'm stuttering. Everybody is. Well, let, let Let's see if we can wrap this up then. Um, there were three new items. Was it Adam? So somebody was talking about Adam. Oh yes, um, I think Holly Holly left, but she was going to talk about Adam. Uh, she had talked to Adam um, Sokolowski about the parade route. Yes. Um, so we'll have to table that for next month. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then you had a question, Jen, about for the. Um, Paul, you have questions from the board. Um, so the question, um, the question was about uh, for the, if someone wants to donate, um, if somebody wants to donate services, in lieu of a financial donation. That was a con uh, something that the nonprofit wanted to ask about because my, my thought process was that would be considered an in-kind donation, which would not be allowed ethically because you can't, because that person could then come back and say, we expect a favor because we did this for the town. So, um, I don't know what your thoughts are on that, Casey. Um, the, the main question was, if the nonprofit is soliciting for a donation, you know, among businesses, individuals, whatnot, and they come back and say that they want to offer or they would like to provide or donate instead of a financial item, uh, they want to donate a service or a good. For example, mm -hmm. someone wants to tear up all of our printing or someone wants to donate meals to our volunteers. Are we allowed to accept that um, through the nonprofit on behalf of the steering committee, you know, to give to the steering committee later? Is that allowed? I think so. It's the, the idea is to keep, keep the solicitation separate. Um, if you're donating a service or something to the town that a, gr a large group or representatives of the town can take advantage of, of for the benefit of the town, there's less of a problem. Um, if you have a direct question though, Jennifer, I think it might be useful to call ethics and ask them yeah, because is. this is, this is a nuance that we don't always see in our ethics training and they have a hotline. Yep, what they'll do. The there's also yeah. an email address. They'll get back to you with an answer, but they usually do their research first. Okay. Um, I I'm, Usually when you donate a good or a service, there is a dollar amount that they will take off on their taxes. And because it's going to the friends of Deerfield instead of the town of Deerfield and what you do with it afterwards is, is so they're, they're, what, that's what the line is. They're donating mm -hmm. it to you because you right. solicited it. You choose to use that service or good however you want. And then so that it breaks the line. It's not the town soliciting it. And it was it 
and or the steering committee. It's you as the Friends of Deerfield. It was given to the Friends of Deerfield. And then the Friends of Deerfield determine where it goes or how it's disposed of is, is separate. It's, it's not in conflict. So, for example, if during the course of solicitation, someone asks the Friends of Deerfield, whomever, which member, like I'm not doing the soliciting to keep that fine line uh, balanced. We have, you know, like Chris Harris and, and other people will be doing the specific asks of corporations and such. Um, so if someone comes and, you know, says during the course, you know, what, what do you need? And we know that the steering committee is looking for someone to um, help with something. I, I don't know specifics. Off you can say office. sound system for our um, fun, you know, for one of our home days or something. Okay, that's a good one. So we say, you know, we're, uh, we know we're in need of a sound system on this particular day. Can you donate that to the Friends of Deerfield? The Friends of Deerfield could then coordinate that for that event and that shouldn't be an issue because we're providing that service um to that right right it, 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 you're determining what the day it will be delivered and that's separate from the town going and doing it the town just doesn't have to pay for it you know in for that event so it's a donation they can take the write-off for the cost of what they would have earned if we hired them but because you solicited it and said, show up on May 12th, and they show up on May 12th, that, that is a definitive you know, line that um, you know, is, it's not an ethics violation, I don't believe. But you could get, go check and verify it with the ethics committee, but using a sound system, a donation of a sound system for a day or, um, you know, landscaping services, say, say we, you know, Peter was talking about doing the 4-H, um, you know, animals and stuff like that um, prior to the Franklin County Fair. Well, you need to have a show ring. So if Sokolowski Landscaping came with landscaping um, um, posts and made a temporary ring um, and, and filled it in with, you know, sand, for a temporary ring, you know, that is a donation to the Friends of Deerfield for that event that you organized, but the town had nothing to do for, you know. Right. But I think the concern is, this is what uh, Jim and Tim were, were coming up with this question, was mostly, um, you know, there are going to be some events that the town puts on that the, the Friends of Deerfield will not be involved in. They're just going to make a financial donation. And right. if someone wanted to make a don a service or a good, um, it would just have to be, uh, it would just have to be delineated where we wouldn't, we wouldn't be involved. Um, you know, if, it, if it's something that we're involved in, then we can say, yes, we have a need for this. Like the gala is something we would coordinate together. The 5K, that's the other question, Casey, I had asked when you start when you first jumped on um, was whether or not um, the steering committee, subcommittee, you know, could could organize and host a 5K because there's really no solicitation of a donation. It's you purchase a ticket to run a race or, you know, to get your bib. So um, is that something that the friends have to do? I'm assuming it's something that the, the steering committee can straight do. I think you're right, but these are the types of questions. If you have a list of questions that you want answer, it sounds like you've got a list of things that are associated with your activities that we should get better definition on. Um, Maybe worthwhile to write that down and I okay. can see if I can get, I mean, there are things that as a steering, as a friends person, I think you may need to ask ethics because they may not tell me. Um, but things like the, the 5k, that seems pretty straightforward to me. Yeah. Because it's not asking for a donation. It's saying we're nope. throwing a race. The, the town of deer or the steering committee, the 350th steering committee is hosting a race 
if you want to participate, here's the fee. So it's not right. a donation. It's a fee to run the race. And it and goes into that bank account that you right. help use for other fundraising activities. Exactly. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. So that should as long as the money it. doesn't touch anything that we deal with, I think it's pretty straightforward. It would well, the money would go into that account that the town already has set up. Donation account. Yeah. So because it would just go in there as part of the fee for the race. It would be in that pot of money. It's not anything that we're touching per se. It's just going into that donation money to be used because that's what it's being used for. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's I'm a, just thinking a, about yeah, it's an where entrance, that falls. It's an entrance fee. So it's a fee to run a race, but the money's just going into that pot. And so that's my question. Does that then become an intersect? So that's, that's actually my question as an administrator because um, yeah, I can't I don't think answer you, that off I don't the think top you of my can, head. I think the, uh, I don't it's think a donation can, account. I get what you're saying. It's yeah, a donation account. Yeah. Um, it's just, I'm just concerned about a direct pass through. If it stops in the middle, that's what I'm concerned about. So that's a nuance that we might actually have to get some I, you know, information have, on. Have Brenda um, talk to the Department of Revenue on that. There might be a guidance document out there. Yeah, I'll talk to her in the morning. Okay. Yeah, because those are the types of questions, you know, that we thought about before, because the gala, the gala is a total separate thing because, you know, the Friends of Deerfield is going to work directly with Deerfield Academy, work directly to solicit tickets, you know, to sell because it's a straight fundraising event where the steering committee has input for just decorating and, you know, helping with that um, type of a thing. So that has no money exchanging hands with the town. It's just a straight donation after the event to the town after the fact. See, that's what I, that's what I was concerned about. If, if the money for the bibs for the 5K goes yeah. into the nonprofit's account and then comes to the town, that's what I'm concerned about. If you're doing it for the gala a certain way, it might be useful to be consistent about that. But then, um, then just because you see the stream of money and where it's coming from. While I hear what you're saying, my concern is then that's more liability for the, then you, then it would be the liability for the 501c3 to coordinate the event, to advertise the event, to do the event. Do you, do you see Who what I'm saying? Who would be doing that? Huh? That would be, be a, a subcommittee, a subcommittee. The 5K steering, subcommittee. steering committee would have a subcommittee, the 5K, and they would be the ones doing it, not the Friends of Deerfield. The Friends of Deerfield wouldn't be affiliated with this at all. Who appoints the subcommittee? Steering committee. The steering committee. So that's the problem. That's a town function. The friends this probably, I, I'm thinking the, the problem might be if you've got, if this isn't necessary, well, this isn't necessarily a town function. It's a fundraising function. So the friends really needs to be that arm. To no, it's do not that a fundraising. fundraising. No, it's just an event. There's no fundraising associated with the 5K. Well, it's, you pay a ticket to run this. Right, but you're actually getting money. Cost. Like, yeah, you it not only the covers cost. the cost, but it's supposed to go into the donation account. The issue is, is if we're physically selling something, then we need to be clear because these are volunteers that are going through an established town committee. In other words, you're creating a, a subcommittee from an established town committee. That's my concern. Well, what, what we're doing is what we had set up, Casey, is everybody, there will be a committee for each event that's on our right. calendar. Like Holly is um, in charge of the um, parade committee. Um, Holly's not, we're not charging anything for the parade. We're paying, the town is paying people for the parade to attend. Right, but if you're physically taking money from somebody for an event, does that have an ethical in intersect is my question. Yeah, well. Because it's, it's the steer, it's members of the steering committee, not members of the friends. That's, that's where, that's where these are nuances. 
This is what I mean about nuances, Jennifer. So, so who do, do we get Lisa to do a first read on this and then go to the- I think I need to see what it is, how it is you've got it planned. Before I try to send something to Lisa, I would like a list of questions because then I can get a better framework. Well, okay. Because this, understand, this is me walking into a meeting just off the top of my head, not knowing all of the things that you guys have talked about. It's maybe just the thing you're doing, maybe the 5k isn't a fun, I mean, isn't a money maker, and maybe it shouldn't be, but you need, you've got some basic expenses. And if, if, uh, in order to put, you've got a subcommittee that sets up a, a race and they say, well, we got two prizes. If you win it, you win $200. And if you, if you come in second, you win a hundred dollars and it's going to cost us, you know, a hundred dollars to hire the police and, and do whatever. And we break even. I don't have an answer. Let me think about it. I need to send Brenda an email so she knows I'm going to ask. <laughs> but okay. it just, uh, Jennifer, we can um, call ethics on Friday and, you know, come up with a list of questions and we can just give them a call and put it out there. I mean, it doesn't hurt to ask the question and you know, I'd rather send them an email because I think having it tangible in writing CYA is more. Sure. And or, then, exactly. Maybe if you, you, you can want certainly to do that, write them down together on Friday after we do the website, you know, yeah. then I can, I can send them all to you and you can look them over. And if we need to revise how we send it to them, that's fine. It's just, you know, I'm just tired. I know everybody else is tired. I'm not saying I'm more tired than anyone else and anyone else's feelings aren't valid. It's just that, you know, it's, it's been a couple years in the making. It's been, well, we just need to build one thing versus another, having things change up and like, you know, looking at other communities, no one else did a pass through, no one else formed a friends, everybody else did it through their town. Um, so I think it's just, it's just taking on so much more in order to get anything done with it. And it's just, it's just overwhelming. That's all. I know. I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just sharing how I'm feeling right now. Um, <laughs> I'm, okay. I'm sorry, Jennifer. Close it up then we can feel refreshed and try to make sure we can get things moving forward in the right direction tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I just, uh, I think everybody's tired. Yeah, let's, let's, this move this to, let's move this on. Um, I think we've got, um, we, yeah. we only have to talk about, I, I'm gonna leave the questionnaire. Let me put it to you this way. I sent you the questionnaire. You've got some comments, some suggestions drop me an email coming back and, and, and I'll go from there. Yeah, uh, I'll have time to look at that tomorrow. Yeah, okay. And um, so let's look at next, uh, the next meeting, our next meeting would be the May 31st. That's uh, Memorial Day. Okay that? Day isn't it? Yeah, that's Memorial Day. Um, oh, do, do you... we want to do before or after? We, I think we're going to need a meeting. Um, I've got to get my supper before May Day. So good night. <laughs> oh. You haven't eaten yet, Jay? Well, I mean, how about uh Oh Jay, it was wonderful to see you. No. Can people nice do to, to a Thursday or Friday or something something the week before? Well, yeah. um I think we need to um I know that we can only email to set up a meeting. So I think if we email to make sure that Holly is available on the twenty fourth. Um, that's a Monday before. Right. Um, I don't know what everyone else's schedule is like. And if there's availability with the Zoom numbers, because I know that there's only so many available. So we want to be mindful of other meetings that might be going on that night too. And if there's an open meeting during the week slot. Um, I just know that um, tentatively the ZBA meets on the 27th as the second or alternative uh, Thursday. So um, I ask for it not to be on that just in case there's a ZBA meeting I need to be at. Uh, ZBA and the Conservation Commission also. Um, Thursdays, Thursdays, yeah. Tuesday, Thursdays too. 
Well, what um, about Monday? I mean, don't forget the 26th, Carolyn. That's our supposed to be our pre-town meeting. Yeah. Um, the, 24th. the 24th is that Monday. Yeah. Um, do you know ahead of time, Casey or Jen, if you have any availability for Zoom numbers or are those other meetings scheduled those nights? At the moment, there's nothing scheduled, but that doesn't mean something could change. <laughs> yeah. I, I also am... Could what? Could, we, could we pencil in the 24th? Just pencil it in. And then we'll send an email out um, to, to Holly to make sure she's available. I'm, I am available on the 24th. Yeah, um, I'll send it to Holly now so I can you know get a response and hope tomorrow. Yeah. Peter, are you available on the 24th? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. okay. Jennifer, just CC me on that. To Holly, sure. Thanks. You're welcome. And then, um, then we'll tentatively try to do the 24th. Um, I, I would rather have a meeting earlier rather than, yeah, you know, wait until June. Yeah. yeah. I still think we should try to get that postcard out. So if we could yeah. put a postcard on the agenda, that would be great. we Will do. I'm going to work on that with Casey. Um, come up with the design formatting so we can get that um, going. Um, I'm not adverse to doing additional mailing in the fall, you know, in um, towards October, you know, the end of September, October, but um, I don't want to wait to do, um, I think we should send out a postcard now and not wait until September, October. Okay. I mean, I feel really strongly about that. Um, to no, I'm, I'm fine with that. My concern was I didn't want people to just look at it and throw it in the trash or not pay attention. Um, well, you're going to have a. Why don't we direct anyway. it to the so Jennifer? Jen, why don't you direct your postcard. postcard to the website? Yeah. yeah, almost like a save the date card. Save the website ID. <laughs> yes, Jen, Jen. maybe um, something that they could do, which would be kind of fun, is say save your card, and you could get something. Deerfield related at an event because then they could keep the card and then yeah. <laughs> and that's seriously true. it's not a bad idea I mean we right. can use the card for oh something. my god yes the card the card is your ticket raffle ticket into something right Ooh, oh my god. I like that oh that's that good better. Jennifer <laughs> sometimes I have good ideas no, you have you great have ideas. Bread. I like a yes. lot of the things you suggest. Okay. Some of them I'm going to be stickler on. Like, like my only concern about tables is that like having a market for them. But hey, if we have three trees, we might be able to make some of them work. I don't know. Um, well, we're bound to have some tokens or whatever for this event. So yeah, I think I think well, we talked about last time. Remember coming up with a business passport too. So like, if people went to all the businesses, you know, they could be entered yeah. for something like you know, maybe some pre-made item like the wall decoration or mm -hmm. um, whatever. But yeah, if, so so I'm hearing maybe you say, that's your passport. Putting, but I'm hearing you say save this postcard to be entered in to Something. receive whatever it is. But then we have to come up with what it is. Well, it could be, it could be like, we could relate it to the passport, right? So keep this card and everybody gets a little stamp and we can go to Michael's and get a different little stamp and everybody cast a stamp because my kids used to go to Santa's village up in New Hampshire and yes. you had to go to every alphabet of the alphabet and get a stamp. And then you got a pencil at the very end and it was, you know, everybody loved it, but I mean, you know, if they had to go to all the different businesses on your postcard and you had little slots where they had to get. Um, they could spell out Deerfield 350th. There you go. And then, and then they, they get something at the end. Who knows? Yeah, what. they have to come up with something, but that could be their passport. Is that what you're saying? That yeah. could actually be the passport. That could be the we passport. put the words in. Yeah. And then right, to be announced. Or we do a crossword something or visit our website at but then we also have folks who don't have the who don't have computers in the internet and i don't want them to feel left out no so just do do the stamps they have to bring this and then they can get um maybe we can make 
little uh, wooden chips that are like a uh, town medal. Yes. I when we were in the parade, they were giving out those um, in Sunderland. They were giving out the wooden butter, you know, with the butterball their yeah. their yeah. thing, and it was, also it was it's a little wooden disc um, with the, you know your pin pin thing in the back, and and it was so cute. It was so cute. I know I have it here. I'll have to show it on the thing next time. Get your, your pin. Yeah, I think I think it's just going to be trying to figure out what to put on there now because if we mail it out, what are we saying for July? Um, well, I think we should try to get into July just because we we are pushing up. It won't, if, yeah. you, if you if you do a full mailer in November you know, uh, say end of September, October, and then you do, you know, the stuffer and the tax bills, because our tax bills have been late. Um, so we have a stuffer in the tax bills sometime, you know, at the end of the year. So you had the postcard, the mailer, and then the stuffer. I think that's good, you know, and, and you can ask Casey or Jen, you got to repeat things at least three different times before yeah, people, people get don't it. read. Yeah. People they need pictures, read. Jennifer. What? Yeah. They don't like to read words. No, pictures are everything. And Maybe so, we could get something with the school. I don't know. I'm trying. So to there's think. our three times that we've nailed them in this, you know, next coming up time frame before we hit 2022, and that's. I think that was what we have to do. Um, 2022. We were also talking about, and I think this is going to have to go through the friends but having that calendar for the year coming up for 2023 so people can be prepared and know. And so that's that other piece that we'll be doing. Right. And we can advertise, you know, the calendars will be on sale. When we do the full mailer in the fall, you know, in September, or October, we can say your calendar, you can order your calendar or pick up your calendars now, you know, kind of thing, whatever. However, we're gonna distribute them because they should be out in the fall for, I mean, I'm already booking meetings. I always have to buy my calendar and my um, day book in September because I'm already booking out into January. Yeah. Um, you know, meetings and stuff like that. So, you know, we have to do that. So they have to be ready by the end of the fall anyway. Well, if you have suggestions that you want to go on the postcard piece, Peter, Carolyn, or whomever, um, just just email them to me. I'll work on drafting something. Um, you liked what I did for the printout flyer thing. Um, you know what, though? I think I might have to revise it because we have an old home day on there. Are we doing anything like that? We, we didn't, we had that talked about in the events, but then we talked about maybe not doing it, so... Um, I think you should talk to Susie Antonellis on that because Susie usually does the home day, but they were can't, it was canceled last year because of COVID and it will be canceled this year again because of COVID. So, um, but she, she might be ready to do next year again. Yeah. Um, okay. I may have to ask you follow-up email questions because I may forget some of this stuff, even though I'm writing things down, I'm not always, yeah. I may have questions on my notes. That's right. It's getting late. So anyway. Well, yeah, we're approaching. We're we're past nine thirty and going on towards ten o'clock. I think we need to. Yeah. Follow hey, discussion. I've only done this one other time, and you guys yelled at me for. <laughs> no. So I call. I'll call a question for for adjournment. I will make that motion right away. <laughs> right. All those in favor. <laughs> I think it's unanimous. Go take a roll call vote. Right. Hi, Carolyn. <laughs> All right. So um, I'll I'll tentatively put in March or May twenty fourth for the yeah. next. Week. Yeah, I sent the email to Holly, and um, hopefully I will get a response from her. Too. All righty. All right. Thanks, guys. Good night, you. Good night.